You're listening to the Boxing Voice. It's showtime! Welcome back, welcome back, boxing fans. Blood is good. We have Heather, the Heat Hardy, is this you? This is me. I think I need to talk to you every night because you make me smile and blush over oh, yeah. here. <laughs> Never been a lame ho. Never been a lame ho. Yeah, I love you. Um, I'm okay. You serious? You serious? And that's the good thing about UK. That's why I can't hate on them guys, man. They love fucking boxing. Some fighters in England. They all bum. Did you hear what this idiot just said? Yo, son, you're gonna get your ass beat by Molina, son. I Are you said, fucking kidding me? He's overrated. Do some bushes for me right now. All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Boxing Voice. And now, uh, as promised, you know I'm joined alongside everybody's favorite. You want the title shot at the three? You're not even running. You want the title shot at the three? What's going on, Nesta? How you doing, brother? Chilling, brother. Chilling. We are back. We're definitely back, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and clear the air for a lot of people. Um, listen, me and Beeb get into heated arguments, uh, and you know, things happen. You know, uh, obviously it's not situations that we want to transpire on air that way, but this is uh, proof that what takes place here is genuine, organic, and passionate. Um, You know, I cannot do what I do without Joe, and I hope that he feels the same way. I feel the same way. For anyone to uh, assume anything different... um, you know, you don't need to because we're transparent. At least I know that I am, and I believe Beeb is the same way. That's true. All of us on here. And that being said, we're going to get into one of the guys that gave all of him to us with his review. Um, and it came on September 26th, and it's from uh, ARJ722. By far, the realest boxing talk radio there is around. From the host all the way to the alumni, you guys are the best. I sit it, I sit in my car and drive extra long routes just so I could finish listening to the show. Sometimes people look at me like I'm some nut job cracking up in my car by myself. Especially lose, I especially lose it when Wood QB MB Chu <laughs> or dude from Africa calls in Mali Bangwe. Uh, thank you for keeping me awake in my car while I drive. You guys are doing a beautiful job, and I wish you guys success in the near future. Please keep doing what you do, and thank you for your public service. Thank you for your five-star review. Uh, I'm going to get into another one because uh, there's one from uh, – actually, a few from Ireland, man, that uh, we need to get to. And, uh, you know, you guys are the best, so – I want to I wanna do that. I've been saying it for a couple of days now that uh, I was going to get to it, and I had it, and I'm sorry, but it's going to take a sec because i got to sign out of one U.S. Uh, iTunes to the next just to get these things from different uh, countries and whatnot. But here we go. Uh, this one is from, uh, I think it's, uh, yes, Wild Brian. Yeah, this is a good one. Wild Brian, five-star review, and he says, from the start, I won't lie, I stopped listening to the show for a couple of months because there was constant interruptions to every caller trying to get their opinion across and couldn't, The and he has parentheses here for whatever it is, in, the TV mouse was the worst. I guess he's talking about Stuart Little there, right? So you guys help me out with who he's talking about. 
Anyway, he says, uh, oh, he thought he was a host. He said, couldn't be heard, and it was carnage at times. Then my mate Larso, so shout out to Larso. I see you on Twitter. We always tweet. Thank you for keeping him informed. He says, uh, then my mate Larso told me the show was using Blog Talk and it was one caller at a time. Now the show runs smoothly. Callers have to wait their turn. Ness is very opinionated and debates his thoughts excellently and has humor to match. Uh, being from Europe, I have no problem with the Eurobum because most UK fans are brainwashed by Eddie Hearn. Uh, let me see. And believe his fighters are world level, yet most 90% are found out at world level. Beeb has the knowledge and the interest in the background of the fights and fighters and the financial game they have to make to calculate it. If the fight is worth the risk, Vic is just excellent. Always calm and puts his points across clearly and knowledgeable. James is the new addition. He, stole, he slots in perfectly. Great knowledge and fast becoming listener's favorite. All in all, I get to keep you, I mean, uh, excuse me, I get to keep up with Boxing World via my iPod. I don't get much time to read the internet now that I work and train uh, the heir to the throne, his one-year-old son. But, uh, at, you know, shout out to Wild Brian. Well, thank you for that and uh, truly appreciate it. I know it's been a while since we read it, so I definitely wanted to get into that. So um, I'm excited to talk about this show because, um, you know, my motto has always been for so long, like I'm not going to invest my time in a fighter unless um, he's on that stage where, where where my time is not being wasted. Like, you know, when he's fighting a name fighter and uh, Arthur Better Beeb or how do you pronounce his name, uh, Beeb? Oh wow. Uh I'm I'm afraid to attempt it myself. Uh I think it's better beef or better bev. Better better bev, better bev or something like that. Um I think it's better bev. But this guy last night had five fights. And I I I'll could be completely honest, I knew absolutely nothing. I never heard of the guy. I never seen the guy. I didn't even know that he was on the undercard one year ago of Adonis Stevens versus Tavares Cloud, um, and he was making his second fight versus, I believe it was uh, Ryan Saunders or something like that. Um, I didn't even know that. But last night when I watched this man destroy Tavares Cloud, I mean wow. – Part of ours cloud, and I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna kick you the ball and let and hear your thoughts. But we're gonna get into the actual fight. But I went on a Bieber binge. I went on a Bieber binge till like six in the morning and watched everything that I could. That's how impressed I was with his performance last night. Bieber, what did you think of this fight? Well, I told you earlier when we spoke about this fight that. This totally flew underneath the radar for me. Obviously, I knew it was taking place, but I really didn't give too much thought to it. I thought it was kind of a, a lower-level tune-up fight for Cloud. I didn't know this other guy, um, uh, Peter Biev, or I hope I'm pronouncing it right. If I'm not, I apologize to him and his fans. But I, I just didn't know too much about him. I looked at the record, I, and I saw the five fights just as you did. And you know, I just felt as though he was set up basically for the kill. He was the antelope being fed to the lion, I thought. And, you know, I know a lot of people now, hindsight is 20, 20 they're looking at this fight, and they're saying, okay, well, that was a shell of, of, of what Cloud was. Um, he's not the same guy he was before. He's not that, that world champion level type fighter that he was before. He was never a world he – was, he was never an, an outstanding fighter, but he was thought to have been a very solid fighter with a very solid chin and a guy who could punch a little bit. So there was some upside to him way back when. Now, obviously, the loss to Hopkins, the loss to um, Donna Stevenson, those took a lot of the the wind out of his sails. And also, the uh, was the fight there he had there with the uh, the guy that Kovalev beat. I can't. Oh, Campillo. I'm sorry. That, that just kind of 
uh, flew away from me there for a minute. But nevertheless, whatever you want to say, if he was not, he's not the same fighter, or whatever. I don't think any of us thought, you know, he was shot. I didn't think he was shot. I, I mean, obviously, he's not what he once was, but he still was a, you know, in my mind, a top ten fighter. I thought. Now I don't know after this fight if I can still consider him a top ten fighter. Maybe, maybe top fifteen. I don't know. But nevertheless, no one has ever done this to him. You know what I'm saying? No one's ever dis dispatched him. No one's ever dispatched him this early. Sorry. No one's ever. No one's ever dispatched him like that so early. No one's ever beat him up in each and every round. And I think he was knocked down in, in every round of the fight, right? If I'm not mistaken. And a couple times. Yeah, he went down three times in the first round. Yeah, and he was knocked down in the second round and the third round. So I was totally shocked from what I saw. I, I just never envisioned this happening. And, and again, this was the worst beating I've ever seen him take. Yes. So it, it, I don't know if he can come back from this. I seriously doubt it. Retirement may be in order after this fight. Man, I'm not even worried about Cloud. I'm more excited that a guy 5-0, and o, this guy's from Russia, but he lives in Montreal now. He's uh, even learning French. Um, they, I found some sparring of him and Pascal, and it was like a, a pro. I don't know what was going on because I can't understand French, obviously. But I was, you know, like I said, I was on a binge. I was like a fucking dope fiend looking for... Mr. Bedebev and more of him after I seen him destroy Cloud. It felt to me like, look, this guy is not Triple G. Like, he's not as, I'm, and, I, and I mean good as, because I've watched everything that he has since it was only six fights. I said, fuck it, let's do it. Um, and look, he's not going to, He's not going to jab you up and work his way in the way that, um, you know, uh, Triple G does. And maybe he will in the future. But right now at six fights, that wasn't what he was trying to do. He would use the jab at times, but this dude just has, I don't know if it's power, heavy hands, whatever. I've never seen Cloud affect or, or react to a shot that way. He was reacting to this man's shots like he was being hit with metal. And uh, when he landed that uppercut, Cloud lost it. I mean, now, I know people are going to call in and say, oh, well, Cloud, that's his fourth loss, Ness. Come on, it doesn't matter. This dude was 5-0. and oh. And if you go back and watch Better Bev's fights, he hadn't fought anyone anywhere near the level of a Cloud, whether Cloud was fading or not, not even remotely. Like, there is no in-between. This dude went from fighting fucking bums and cab drivers because I sat Listen, Saunders was one of the better fights that he had, and that's when it was his second fight beef. Saunders was a pretty slick fighter with a, with a good jab, good movement, but, you know, just a veteran. You know, he already had, like, 20 losses when he fought this dude. But, again, you can, he wasn't he, – he was like a chop-chop. Imagine a chop-chop, but in that weight class. That's what it felt like to me watching the Saunders fight. But this Billy Bailey guy – Oh, man, they found that dude at a fucking bar. And, again, I say that all to say that he went from fighting bar guys and taxi drivers and boogie down Sean's Gardner or Canadian Jose's Gardner, rather. And shout out to Canadian Jose because these guys are fighting out of Canada, and this brought some action. So did Jerry Jean, which we'll touch on too. But he went from fighting that level of opposition to fucking Tavares Cloud and did that, man, I'm on the fucking bandwagon. I want to see what's next. So is this guy a player now? Or basically, you know, we wanna we what? wanna see that now, now we're giving him now we're giving this guy a second thought, whereas before he wasn't even on the radar. So well, at least we can say this guy's on the radar. I'll tell you how much of a player he is. Like I said, one year ago, this man was already fighting on the undercard of Adonis Stevens, who is the lineal champ in the division, when he was facing Tavares Cloud. A year ago, he he's in the ring with the same dude that he was he was had he was under, you know, he was on yeah. the undercard. Okay, so now this dude is also signed to Yvonne Michaels, um, which is great. Gym promotions, 
They already have Adonis Stevens. They can make all those Canadian fights and Tony Bellew fights very easily. But um, this dude, ladies and gentlemen, and look, I may be late. I hope that we get a bunch of you guys that call in and say, oh, Ness, you see, I knew about this guy. You're, I'm happy for you. And I will just repeat myself by saying this. I'm not investing no time in no fucking better Bev when he was fighting Saunders and Billy Bailey. But he fought... Tavares Cloud, my eyes was open. I wanted to see what was going on. And he showed me I should continue to watch him. This guy is signed to uh Jim. It means it's, a lot of fights could be made. I, I watched some sparring with him and Pascal. Like I said, I don't know what the hell was being said, but he was fucking Pascal up to me. Did Pascal uh look good? Yes, he did because he was using that Roy Jones style of fighting, that movement, heavy movement, B, which we all know he can't fucking sustain in a real fight. So, yeah, in a spar match, when again, a couple of minutes of footage of you, yeah, you're going to look good doing that bullshit. But in a 12 round fight, listen, Better Bev might kill him. That's how strong wow. he looks. This motherfucker wow. looks like the Terminator just coming forward. Like his back is big as hell. He's in good shape. Man, I want to see him again. He looked, again. he looked very muscular, didn't he? Very muscular. Uh, well, look, I, I I fucking watched it on Apple TV. You know, I'm lazy. I can't sit in front of a computer. So, um, I'm I had a 720p. Uh, I don't want to say he, uh, to me he looked jacked though. I don't yeah, know. That's what I'm saying. He looked jacked. I don't and know. You know what's funny? He's 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 normally been coming in at like 182, 185. Like, I guess this was the first time he. This yeah. is the first time this dude's ever made weight. And let me tell you this. He beat Kovalev in the amateurs not once, but twice. Wow. He fought in, in the Olympics as a heavyweight, though. Oh, okay. This motherfucker must be the real deal. Let Shout me ask you this. Michaels. Let me ask you this. Let's play matchmaker for a bit. Do we throw him in there with Campillo next? Would that be a nice little test for him? Different style? Well, I mean, if you're looking to find out if he has versatility, like, look, I don't want to rush him either. So, but I am super impressed with the with the cloud fight, which means that the level of a Campillo and cloud is what has to continue to come from him at this point. Um, so yeah, I'd accept a Campillo now. I don't know how well he'll do versus a Campillo because you know he he had it he hasn't had to show us what he needs to do. Or what he would do if he had a constant jab, or at least a a, a jab, a, a successful jab in a one-two, which is going to keep any big man back, you know. Um, but the people he's been fighting haven't been giving him that. Cloud attempted at times, but again, it seemed to me like when this dude would land a punch on Cloud's shoulder, he would move him. You you did you watch that fight? Yes. Yes. I mean, he was physically moving. I don't know. I, I'm waiting to read that fucking Cloud had the flu or something. It like, looked like It looked like child abuse, man. It, it, was, it was sad. It was sad. It looked like child abuse. Child abuse. That's exact. It looked like one man was completely too strong for the other man. Let's take some calls. 941, you're live. Who's this? Yo, Joe good? Brother, 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 help us out, brother. Take it off speaker, get it together, so uh, the other guys listening uh, can have a good experience too. Nine one four, coming right to you. What's up? What's up, my man? Hey, yeah, I was calling in. I saw the fight as well. The dude did look like a freaking beast, and I looked it up. He did beat Kovalev twice in the amateurs. I mean, I don't know, dude's real deal. I mean, he's got a, he's got a, um, he's got a. I have a whole record now, six and over six knockouts. I mean, you can't, you can't like uh, jump on the bagwagon yet. But yeah, he was looking, he was looking pretty fierce. Well, my, um, I just want to be clear that you know that the bandwagon that I'm jumping on is that I'm ready to see him again on television. Oh, absolutely. Versus, versus this I level, agree. versus I agree. this level of opponent or better like he already stepped up to the cloud level and passed that with flying colors you can't go backwards from here yeah i i agree you have to go up uh i think uh oh man i if, if uh if he fights campio i think that'd be a good fight um i don't know if he'll jump right into that like you said you're right about that um but 
I mean, I definitely want to see him again. I don't know if they'll put him on network, you know, anywhere we can see it real soon, but I'll definitely check in on the internet like I did last time, and that was that was pretty good. So that's all I had to say about that. All right, brother. Well, thanks for calling in. We're going to get to some other callers here. Um, B, so some other fights took place this weekend. Uh, that we should touch on just a little bit, just in case uh, everybody wasn't a diehard Montreal, Canada fan and, and went out looking for that. I'm going to bounce around. Remind me to come back to Derry Jean because I was impressed with Derry Jean as well. You know, he, he definitely uh, suffered. He went through some stuff. Did you watch that fight? I heard about that fight. I didn't get it. I wasn't able to watch that one. I don't. I couldn't get a stream or anything like that, but I heard about that fight and it was a tough fight, I heard, and um, you know the, the 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 kid has some defensive liabilities. I mean, and that's always going to make the fights interesting. I think he's a good offensive fighter, but um, I think his defense is porous. I I don't think he's very slick. I think he's so um, geared towards trying to land the power shots and trying to really impose his will upon his opponent, and that in turn. You know, gives gives his opponent openings. I don't think he. I think he thinks defense last and offense first. There's not like a balance there. And um, I heard he got t touched a bit in this fight. Am I wrong? He did get touched, and it was with like uh, numerous right hands. But he he came back. Now the thing is, this this kid, um, Daniel Ruiz was listed at five seven, and so was Derry Jean. But someone was fucking lying, and it was Derry Jean. Derry Jean could not uh, be the same size. He looked smaller, and he kept leaning uh, downward. So the right hand just kept landing. It just kept yeah. landing. Um, but but even with that, he was able to come back and knock the dude out in the fifth round and box pretty well. And at 135, I think he's a fucking problem. I think so. Um, yeah. At 135, you know, now Vasquez is out. Now him and Mickey Bay, that's a good fight. Does he get, uh, you know, a decisive victory since Mickey Bay just robbed Vasquez? I mean, I don't know. But um, that's a good fight to watch. Uh, you know, him him versus Omar Figueroa, he loses. He can't take pressure. There's no way. But you don't think you don't think he has a shot in that fight? No, no, no way he no way he was. But look. I'm high on Figueroa, even though I know he has all the flaws that he has. But when I match him up, I match him up his motor versus the other guys because this guy isn't going to stop throwing punches. And Derry Jean can't stop a right hand. So, uh, yeah, I think that Omar Figueroa is... Yeah. You could be right because because Jean, Jean doesn't put enough punches together. I think he's too reliant on landing that big right hand of his. He, that's his bread and butter. And he's not really a good combination puncher, so if he if he's gonna sit there and wait for the big shot, Figueroa is the guy that can bring volume to the table, and I think that volume could overwhelm him. That's a, you know you could be right. Good counter puncher, but this is only his second fight at 135. So let's see if maybe with a couple of more fights he gets acclimated because he does have power. Um, he is hurting guys and he's dropping guys. It's just not happening on the world level like you know versus a peterson it didn't happen versus god daniel ruiz yeah but again who's daniel ruiz he has had some fights don't get me wrong i looked it up and uh he's got about two or three notable names daniel ruiz that is but you know it's no one in the top 15 of the 135 pound division but again uh derry jean adds something to that division i like it i like what i see and uh, I wouldn't mind uh, seeing some more. Um, let's take some more callers here. Six, eight, two. You're live. Who's this? Yo, what's the Prezi? Hey, what's going on, Ephraim? What's up, man? It's been so long since you called. Introducing to you, Ephraim. All right, all right. Um, I want to tell you about this dude. Uh, um, he signed the top rank, the light heavyweight. Is his homeboy, uh, Arthur Betterbee's homeboy. His name's Igor Mikonsev or something like that. That dude is nasty as hell. They homeboys, and at the Olympics, they traded fucking weight classes like like 20 days out. They just traded weight classes. Like, you want to go to light heavyweight? And the other dude said, yeah, I'll go to heavyweight for you. And uh, they just switched, swapped it out. And uh, 
One of them got a bronze. One of them got a gold. So they boys, and y'all need to check out Igor, too. That dude is nasty. But he is on top rank. You know how they slow cook shit. Yeah. That's for sure. Yep. All right, then. I'm so out. Igor, what division is he in? Uh, he's light heavy. Oh, light heavy as well? Oh, man. That's, that's, yeah. uh, that's unfortunate. That's yeah, you know they're going to slow cook his got, ass. Efren? What's up? How many does how many fights does he have? I think he has about one or two. Oh, he's fresh. Yeah. Anywho, um, did you see this uh, Chavez fight? Yes, I seen the Chavez fight. I'm glad that you called about to talk about now, that. Now, Listen, now what? Someone was there something mentally wrong or? Well, absolutely. I believe that something was wrong with Chavez, and uh, I'm a conspiracy theorist, so I could come up with beautiful movie scripted scenarios if that's what you want but it would well, be totally, please do. It would please be totally do. hypothetical though it would be hypothetical but if you want to dream with me okay I mean Omar Chavez uh, came into this fight clearly did not train whatsoever he, he, he didn't put any emphasis into the fact that it was one Mexican family name versus another big Mexican family name one that not only is a Mexican family name, but it's one that established itself. There is no legendary father that fought a hundred and something times and fought with the greats that created the name. This is a pack of kids came out of nowhere and they're making a name for themselves. And one fighter, one last name took that seriously and the other one did not. And I had it a fucking sweep. Listen, Ramon or Ramon Alvarez was looking sweet. Now, did he uh, did he get carried away and fight with his hands down at times and allow himself to take some big shots, which he rolled? Yeah, he did. So shout out to DJ Cruz from Philadelphia for uh, putting me on that fight because I would have not watched it, but I did. It was entertaining in a way that a one-sided beatdown is entertaining because Omar Chavez, with all the size and and even that last name, couldn't save him from Alvarez's little brother or whatever. Little brother maybe in weight because I don't even know what fight this what weight this fight took place at. To be honest with you, because Raymond looked very much smaller than Omar. Omar was longer, was taller, was stronger, but he is a fucking bum. He's a bum. He, he looks like his brother, Julio Cesar Chavez, to the T, except he's like 17 levels beneath him. He backs up the same way that Chavez does. He blocks the same stupid way that Chavez does and takes shots like Chavez does, but he does it all worse to the 10th more power. This dude I'm sorry, man. That dude sucks, man. And fucking Alvarez put a beat beating on him. I mean, his father was in the in the in the in the in the in the stands and you could see him put his hand on his face and disgust. I mean, I'm not making this shit up. Somebody go look at it. Yo, and call Ness. me a liar. Yo, Ness. Hey, um, so um, which which uh which Alvarez is this? Cause we seen the one that fought Yayo Thompson. We seen the one that um, tell me tell me which one this is. Have we seen this Alvarez before? I've never seen this one. The one that I have seen is Ricardo, which is the one that uh got a robbery over Rod Salka. I've seen, of course, Rigoberto, and of course Canelo. Um, I don't think I've seen any other Alvarez. All right, then. All right, brother, let me get to some other callers then. Um, B, did you have a chance to watch the uh, Alvarez versus Chavez? Could you imagine what the real fight would be like if Canelo, Saul Canelo Alvarez versus Julio Cesar Chavez? Wow, I mean, listen. Could that fight ever happen, though? Because there's, so, there's such a size discrepancy. Well, listen. Alvarez has been weighing 174 fight night, so they could come up with a good catch weight. Listen, uh, he's he's clearly going to be the draw. If he beats Cotto, I I'd say if I were him, I'd make uh I'd make fucking Julio Cesar Chavez coming at a catch weight of like 161, 162. 
No, no, no. Don't give them too much. Make them yeah. train. Make them train and, and have a, oh, my God, the the, side, the magnitude of that fight. Listen, this little fight, they put that shit, it looked like an eight-foot ring. I Listen, if you guys like one-sided beatdowns and you're invested into the Alvarez name and the Chavez name, go watch this fight. Go watch this fight because it was a good fight. Don't get me wrong. Chavez would have a shot here and there, but he would take a lot of shots in the round and he would throw very few punches. And Raymond was like, he was like a little beast too. He's got a nice looking body. He's really, he reminds me of a Gamboa type body uh, is what he has. And he actually is shorter and knows how to get inside very good. But he got so confident from such a, ass whooping that he was giving Julio, I mean, uh, excuse me, Omar, that he started to put his hands down and stuff at, at times, but I was okay with that because he was still doing majority of the hurting in there uh, while Alvarez was just retreating and, and dis just ruining the family name, for God's sakes. But let me get to some other colors here. I got 267. Uh, you're live on the boxing voice. Yeah, yeah, what's happening? Um, I want to uh, touch on a couple of issues to start off. About Figueroa, which I was speaking about. Figueroa made me a little bit more of a believer in his last fight with um, Belmonte. I was a little bit questionable about him, especially after that firefight with Howard Cowell. Just on the strength that I still think that there's a little bit of weakness where as much attack ability as he has, he seems that if a fighter of that size could back him up and dig in his chest and a light puncher like Howard Cowell, I always thought that he was going to be an easy blueprint for the next guy who came along, especially a full-fledged lightweight with a little bit of a punch. His last fight, though, he showed me a little variation, primarily with his jab. He has a very good jab, especially for a Mexican fighter. Most of them don't tend, they tend to abandon that punch a little bit, but they get over anxious and over aggressive. I'd be real interested in seeing Figueroa, even potentially against the winner of Crawford and uh, Beltran. With the same strength, I heard that he's supposed to be moving up and uh, well, he might be moving up to junior welterweight, so I don't know. But I wanted to uh, touch more on the, on the uh, topic of... Uh, Something that, um, actually spoke, that y'all spoke about last week, I didn't get a chance to get in on. In terms of the whole controversy on Mayweather Madonna and the holding and everything else that everybody spoke about, I personally feel as though it's a lot of overstated and a lot of overblown. From like, for instance, if you take a if you take a typical fight, you take uh, Pascal Hopkins, Hopkins, and you see how Hopkins just had him holding all over the place. Every time he hit Pascal with a clean shot, he clinched on, and when the referee's asking him to break and everything, he's still holding on. That's to me, that's a level of unacceptable holding. There's a difference between nullifying opponents, smothering opponent, and general rank generalship. Everything. If you're tying up, like whenever Bayless nah, called uh, nah, holding, nah, I can see listen, continue listen, to hold. Listen. I can see it extend for that standpoint. Hold on. Hold on, brother. Because you're about two mm -hmm. weeks too late, and now you're trying to justify holding. You know I ain't even no. off that. No, 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 is, no, no. Listen, listen here. You can do about, any. It you can do about just hear holding. me out. Hear me out. If hear we, me out. Listen, you can do so any if, type of holding that you want. Home. You can do any type of holding that you want. But when it becomes as excessive as that fight a couple of weeks ago, don't justify it. I, don't justify it. Look, that's not. That's no, that, is that, that is absolutely illegally tactical. If we're going to take away holding, right or wrong, if we're going to take away holding, we can take away the credit for every one of Ali's wins. He was known for pulling so his opponents behind away. his head and everything. So he take it away. So take it away. I don't care. So take it away. away. Rumble in the jungle. We can wipe away. Take, you know, we can wipe, wipe it away. away. Wipe Why it away. Why is that a problem? Wipe it away, because brother. It, You're talking to the wrong it's person. It's if it's up to me, I don't give a fuck about none of them wins. I don't live in that generation. This is my generation. So wipe it away if you want. Whether, right whether we took him away or not, you're missing the point of what's being said. What's being said is that pretty much means that we're sitting there taking something that's rather commonplace in the sport. Listen, I just don't understand. Before. I don't understand how long you've been listening to this show that you think I'm going to let you get that off. You know me personally, not B. Not be not Vic. Right. Me, right. you know me. I yeah, am the ain't only like, first one off, first off, from the inception of me. I'm talking about Listen, what, what if you know me, you know from the inception of me that I've never liked holding. I never liked it. I discredited Alexander when he did it. Whoever does it, I discredited him. So all I'm saying is, it's like it's a, it's an argument that you and I shouldn't have. Just just move on to another topic. Yeah. Go ahead, because I'm never gonna agree. I don't. Any, I don't even bring it up anymore, man. I I, I respect your stance on it, and that's it. Correct me if I'm wrong. The purpose of the show was to come in and state our opinions. The purpose of the show was for the idea, for the viewers and the listeners to be able to diverse their opinion. If you disagree, it's fine enough to say disagree. I'm stating what I feel about that particular topic. But 
Like, you know what I'm saying? But, but you're like three weeks late. Plus, we did like seven shows on week. that. I didn't, nobody answered the phone. Uh, I mean, I didn't get on there. You know how many up. Mayweather shows week. we did? Go back and check the archive. We've done like at least literally four to five Mayweather shows because we know it's a, it's an exciting topic and we know he's a big name and people want to talk about it. It takes yeah, a but, long time not, for the dust not, to settle. It's not just make, but it's not. I understand what you're saying. It's not just Floyd. I felt the same way with Diego Chavez versus Rios when everybody jumped on Diego Chavez about it and everything, and they sat there and said that he's holding. They're listening. They're, re- they're, re- they're leaving out the fact that this is actually a retaliatory foul. If you look at, at the footage, you see Rios' head underneath Chavez's chin the entire fight, and that's illegal. Nobody speaks about that because the thing is, the boxing rules are being forced to cater to the offense right now. It's just like football with all the rules with the quarterback and shit like that. It's no different. This is the point I'm making. It has nothing to do with Mayweather. It has nothing to do with anybody particularly. But the thing is, I'm seeing more and more of the commentators will complain about certain levels of holding that are not the same. If you check the rule book with Murphy's Queen's uh, rules, not every form of holding is wrong. I understand. As a fan, I don't like to see holding either. Yes, everybody wants to see action, and they want to justify that. The purpose, but, um, but what I'm saying is they're also leaving the offense between, I mean, leaving the opponent between a rock and a hard place in some of these situations. Because, like, the way that the rule book is enforced, you're being instructed to ignore whatever blatant fouls the offense, whatever infractions that they're calling and everything, and instead cite the defender for stalling the action. I don't feel as though that part is, is fair. That's the description. That's the that's that's what I'm trying to explain. It's not a justification. It's not defending Floyd. It's not anything about that. The matter of fact and, is, and you know what is, my problem is. is sport right now. You know what my problem is. My problem is that you still feel it's the 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 person who's on defense's fault that he has to hold. Not me. I feel no. it's the referee's fault that. Whoever is playing Floyd Mayweather that night that's on the defense and is forced to clinch the Maidana that night, it's the referee's fault for not yeah. reminding Floyd he can't do that, enforcing the yeah. rules. So it doesn't matter if it's Floyd that, or that Alexander part I, that part or whoever I, that part who's part doing the holding. But what, what I'm saying? It's the referee's I mean, but, fault, what? man. It's the ref's fault. These referees are afraid at this point. Listen, they're afraid at this point to really enforce these rules because they get ridiculed like the referee in Washington, D.C. that ref the Amir Khan versus Lamont Peterson fight. When you enforce the 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 rules... Exactly. Exactly. The fight with Darrell and Sakio Bika. The referee gets ridiculed for doing his job, so he's forced to act the way Cortez and Bayless act. Yeah, but the thing is, that rule has to go on both sides, and this is the thing that people aren't seeing. It comes from both angles. I agree that holding, when a fighter is doing it the way Camacho was doing it, when a fighter is sitting there doing it as a, as a blatant act of sitting there trying to survive or he needs to recover, if the referee's calling break and he's continuing to hold and he's not letting go and stuff like that, yes, I agree completely. The referee needs to enforce it. The referee needs to keep points. However, there is smother and there is nullification. What people don't understand, I know from a boxing standpoint, I used to do this shit, and the number one thing that any trainer would tell you is that if you're back to the corner and your back is to the rope and the dude's got his head under your chin or he's got his head in your chest and everything, he has the leverage right now. You only have one or two viable options. If the referee's going to allow him to pin his head under the crown of your, head, uh, your chin, that's holding you upright. That's how you're going to be open for overhand rights. You're going to be open for any of that shit he throws. You only have one or two logical options. You can push off and make room for yourself to punch or you can tie him up before he can get off because if he can get, that's the only two. There is no third. So put yourself in a fighter situation in that situation. What other viable option do you have? If your chin, if your back is to the ropes and, his, and your opponent has his head under your chin, to he get him off. Bitch, you can either tie him he up. He could or... bitch. He could bitch to the ref the way that he bitched to the ref about being fouled. He could say the it, same thing. That goes both right. That goes both ways. But it's not about bitching to the ref. It's about anything. What we're talking about, what I'm speaking about, is the actual rule of holding in itself. We're not discussing Mayweather. I felt like this to Eagle Chavez. I felt like this when Andre Ward was fighting Edwin Rodriguez and he was doing all that bullshit. I'm talking about in general fights altogether, like like in general fights. Period. As much as real, uh, as much as real, felt some type of way about Eagle Chavez. The thing is, I understood about he was frustrated being tied up, but on the same strength, I don't think he understood that what he was doing was illegal the whole time. And the referee has to enforce both sides of it. You're not allowed to leave with your head. Why does nobody talk about that aspect? Why does nobody really talk about that aspect? You're not allowed to put your head under the crown of your opponent's chin. You're not allowed to hold them in place. Because, the we don't again, about that is because what we I'm want trying to, to explain to you... We want to see, to see right no, what I'm trying to explain to you is that it all boils down to the ref. It just boils down to the ref and the perception of himself that he wants to put out there. Because then if a right. ref enforces each rule, 
we're going to say he he's interjected himself too much throughout that fight. And that's just the problem, but, you know, listen, part, I, agree I got a lot of calls I got to get to, brother. We're going to have to wrap this up. Uh, give me your, your last thoughts on it, at least. All right. All right. Yeah, basically, I'm saying that part we agree with. I agree that the referee has to do his job of enforcing. I also feel as though that it also puts the ref in a bit of a bind on both sides, where he has to enforce both. You have to tell one, he can't, I mean, I believe the rules have to be enforced equally. This fighter can't, this, can't, um, this fighter can't hold excessively. This fighter can't commit blatant fouls. And also believe that there's a different level of fouling. There's a difference between, like, every foul is not equal. Holding is not equal to blatant low blows or rabid punches and stuff like that. It's the same way, like, uh, like you know, a murder is not equal to somebody commit, uh, jaywalking or littering. Them. There are different levels of foul, and there are different natures that I believe the referees have to enforce. I'm but not the going problem, wait, 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 wait. See, the problem with that is that those laws in boxing, they're all, they all carry the same sentencing, a point reduction, and another point reduction, and on your third one, you could be disqualified. So, yes, it is the same fucking level. Absolutely. You know, That's what I tried to first, argue with B a couple of weeks ago. If you blatantly low blow your opponent, normally that's an automatic point. Sometimes if you do a breach of foul enough, that's an automatic disqualification. All right, yes. It's not going to be an automatic disqualification for a hold. You're going to get a warning. You're going to get but something you could. like that because but they're not you could. levels of foul. But you could, you could disqualify because if I'm the referee and I tell you stop holding, after three fucking times, I could get rid of you. Right. You don't want to listen. That's what we just said. Listen, hey, you're not listening to what I just said. You just said after three times. If you put if you punch somebody in the dick and it's blatant, they can rid, get rid of you the first time. They don't Absolutely. Issue, no warning, and they ain't got to do shit because they're obviously but, not two different levels. Yeah, of but the point still is they all carry the same sentence, point reduction. So they have to be treated as <laughs> such, all high level. They're all high level because they're all a point reduction. Deduction. Listen, Madonna's right, first. Ho gonna... Listen, hold on. Madonna's first mm -hmm. clinch resulted in a point deduction. The first one where he things points. got a little bit rough. Madonna there was no warning. There was no warning. That wasn't the... a clinch. That was an elbow to, to Floyd's throat and everything. <laughs> that was a, it. Wasn't Madonna who clinched. If you looked at it, Floyd went to smother inside. Madonna got flushed. No, Floyd no, no. I mean, they Madonna both, both listen, over him right. Floyd got Floyd inside, he grabbed him around his waist, clinch. Madonna pushed his elbow off on his, on his forearm. Floyd his initiated a clinch, and Madonna got real rough with his forearm, elbow, everything, and tried to walk through Floyd because Floyd was trying to initiate a clinch. That's what happened. Exactly. That's why they but fell. That's the difference between the two. Exactly, and that's the difference between the two styles. You tell me Floyd's clinch looked anywhere near as blatant as the elbow to his foot. Yes, but like in the manner, like listen, the level of foul. in the manner in like which that... In and boxing the no, 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 no. In the <laughs> manner, in the manner in which that played out, I don't think it was right of the of the referee to take a point away because Floyd was going down. It wasn't like Madonna came at him with an elbow. It was the result of the clinch, and he took it a step Whoa. further. Absolutely, but it doesn't it doesn't necessarily merit a, an immediate point deduction because they were two men falling down. Madonna yeah, had no control <laughs> over his body. They were both falling down. But look, I got to let you go, man. There's too many callers. I'm sorry. You, oh, my God. Right. Mayweather fans. Ah! And he going to say he ain't no Mayweather fan. Whatever. Uh, Let me see. Who we got? 443. Four, You're live. Who's this? Yo, Ness, the slug, man. What's up? What up? What up? Talk to me. Yo, you got to give me my own intro, man. I want Rick Ross, no gay. <laughs> on my intro. We'll see, brother. You you got to make your calls exciting to merit an intro. Oh, come on, man. All right. But hey, anyway, um, hey, did I hit you? I I thought I told talked to you about the dude Carl Dawson. Did you did you did you uh, look up that fight? Yes, the one he had last week. Yeah, but, uh, against the dude Perez. Yep. Hey, what do you think about this dude called Dalvin? Because hey, um, um, have seen the um. Yeah, he's not uh, seen Richardson. Same old trainer, uh, yeah. nephew. Yes, 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 he is. Yeah, but he got dropped that fight, man, in the third round. Mhm. Mm so he went what eighteen to old. So I, I don't really know what to think of this dude, man. I mean, he looked like he had shape and all that, but his chin looked a little bit shaky to me. Yeah, and I and I'm not I'm not really sold on his power yet. I need to see him versus some better opponents. Um, I don't necessarily think he has as much power as they believe. 
Yeah, I think you're gonna have a hard time on it in his weight class, man. Because you know he got some skills, but he just not powerful sure. enough. Yeah, exactly. It's not powerful enough. You gotta get powerful a little more. But uh, hey, I'm doing a little bit something else here. I'm, I'm gonna let you go. Uh, All right, brother. My... Well, thanks for calling in, man. Uh, you know, I want to switch topics just a little bit. I want to talk about James Kirkland. I know we mentioned it in the past, but uh. We always got to, you know, hit some headlines. And now that it's out, that he passed up on 270000 to fight Gabe Rosado on November 8th, which would have been the, you know, co-main event of Bernard Hopkins versus Sergey Kervilov. Um, and James opted out of that fight. Um, Kirkland's camp promoter, uh, 50 Cent, um, Michael Miller, with the blessing of the trainer, Ann Wolf made a deal with Rosado and the promoter Golden Boy for the fight, even getting Rosado to agree to come down from 160 to a catch weight of 157. So everything was looking good for Kirkland. It was a winnable fight for Kirkland, um, and he bailed on it. Nobody knows why, uh, but he told his attorney that it wouldn't be enough time for a training camp, but it would have been eight weeks for a training camp. So we don't know why. Um, the first. Can I, can I tell you what I heard? Yeah, but let me just finish up. With okay, the I'm sorry. Time, the first time that he pulled out of a fight was with um, Canelo. And that time it was money. And now this basically just sounds more of Kirkland afraid to get the, inside these big fights. What I, what I heard, what I read, was that Kirkland wasn't happy with his cut. And I guess HBO gave 50 cents. A specific amount of money just for being able to offer up Kirkland and I guess Kirkland found out about what 50 Cent was getting and that kind of set him off because he felt because 50 Cent was getting such a, such a large chunk that he felt that he should be getting more. Um, his, his manager, Kirkland's manager was being interviewed, I forget who interviewed him but I was reading the interview and he was saying that Kirkland originally agreed to the deal, but then he went yes. back and said, "But then he went back and said the deal Michael was Miller because yeah, he yeah. have a manager. He yeah. only has a lawyer. He uses the so, so, as a manager or an advisor or whoever, whatever you want to call. Him. I think I think the guy was Miller. You're correct. And what what Kirkland was saying was the deal was switched up on him at the last minute, but uh, Miller said no, it wasn't. It was the same deal that he agreed to. So, but now they're saying that um, he may be. Canelo's next opponent, or he may be holding up for Canelo. But the funny thing but is... If, that, if that's the truth, why would his attorney, again, that works for him, be basically running his name through the media in a, in a negative way? Because this is the attorney quoting all this stuff, saying, you know, that this sounds the same and it is more... Did you read the article? Did you read the same article that I read? I mean, this is from ESPN. Um, there was another. I think there was another article. I, I, listen, not, I, listen to this direct quote from Miller. He says, "I think it was a very fair offer. Yeah, great opportunity. I told James, you have to beat fighters like Rosado if you're going to get a world championship. It was a great opportunity and a very fair deal. Fair deal. So I am frustrated and disappointed. James was going to make his biggest payday." to fight on HBO against a guy who lost three of his last four fights. So now, again, looking at as this guy is his attorney, why, why would it be, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't put it out there like that. I would I would keep my... Yeah, he kind of he he opened his mouth and, and, yeah. and made Kirkland look bad. But you know what else he said? Something you know, that we all knew, though. We knew yeah. Kirkland was a little uh, out there. Yeah, but you know what else he said? He said that Kirkland had turned down like three fights that were million dollar purses before and that he he that he should be a millionaire today if he fought yeah. those because I remember Andrade told me that they offered him the fight he didn't want that um you know he he didn't take the Willie Nelson fight you right. know, this dude just doesn't he like he doesn't want to the fight's got to be in his favor it's bottom line I, I guess he but I, but that's because he was thrown in with the Wolves in the past. So, like, after he fired everybody, I guess he smartened up and he's not going to take, um, you know, a fight where he could lose for a little bit of money. But I think that a Rosado fight for 270 sounds very uh, lucrative, in my opinion. But you know what? 
but you know what's funny? Tell me if I'm wrong. Did wasn't he offered 1.2 million to fight Canelo a couple years ago, and he turned that down too? Yeah, yeah. He was one of the opponents when Canelo wanted, you know, when Canelo wanted either him, Paul Williams, and and uh, a bunch of other people. But um, let's 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 get to some callers here. We yeah. let's go to eight one eight. You're live. Who's this? What's up, guys? This is AB. AB, what's up, brother? Um, so yeah, just regarding the Archer fight, um, all right, this guy doesn't only have power. I mean, look at look at the way he stains. Look at his technique, his footwork, his defense. Um, look at the way he fights inside when um, Claude was trying to hold him. And look, look I, at wait, the way he, I, I, you know, I, he hit I, him. With I don't know. I disagree. I think that he was. Um a lot less accurate than Golovkin and Kovalev, honestly. I think that he missed a lot of shots against Cloud, but when he landed, they were just so fucking hard. But I think that he missed a lot. I don't like his accuracy, I don't, and, I, and I, I disagree with you. I don't think that he's as nowhere near as skilled as a Golovkin. I know it's sad that I'm comparing this, you know, all the Euro guys together, but I am because they kind of have all the same style. But I think that he has the less effective style in terms of techni techni technically, but power, he might be the strongest. If And that's why I went back and watched all the other fights because I've never seen Cloud react like that to a shot. So I said, damn, let me see. And that Saunders, Saunders guy... He he's he gave him rounds, but he eventually went to sleep too. Yeah, but look at the way that uh, look. Cloud isn't a joke. Cloud is a top top ten uh, light heavyweight, former world champion. But look at the way that Cloud was, you know, running back. Yes. So that's why uh, you know, he, he didn't he didn't catch him obviously with every single shot. The way that Cloud was backing up. But regardless, I mean, uh, Cloud was tagging Hopkins. Uh, Cloud's never been knocked down before. Uh, but regarding technically, um, the, Arthur actually beat Kovalev twice in the amateur. I know. And, you know I, I he's stated a, that. He's a two-time former world champ. Um, I stated that like, twice. I, I would, yeah, I mean, if they fought, I would. I, it would be 60-40 uh, Kovalev for me right now if, if he fought Kovalev. Um, just because of Kovalev's mental strength. I think Kovalev mentally is very, very strong. Um, I, like before the Isma Salik fight, when they asked him if you beat him, you know, and then Kovalev said, not if I beat him, when I beat him. Like, the guy just goes into the fight knowing he's going to win. Like, he's just super, you know, he's just really, really mentally strong. Um, but, um, yeah, the, the light heavyweight division right now, forget welterweight. Watch, in a year, the light heavyweight division, it's going to be the strongest um, division. I mean, well, that guy, Igor McCansev, actually he's got five, he's got five fights. He's an Olympic gold medalist. Uh, five wins, five knockouts. Uh, another, uh, you know, same thing. Like, can you imagine, like, former world champ, champions, gold medalists, you know, all in the same weight class competing for another, uh, against another? And, it, I mean, it's just, it's going to be the most competitive weight class. Um, yeah, but I need, I need right my now, Ray Leonard. You know? I need my Ray Leonard. I need my, I need my Chris Algieri. I need him. Uh, you know, it, it would get boring to me if all we had was Brandon Rios at one uh, at 175. Yeah, but how can you compare these guys to Brandon Rios? I mean, essentially, if you if everyone in division is fighting the same, that's what it becomes a war. Whenever, well, whenever no, Cloud, whenever Cloud would stop and fight, it was a war. A war he was losing, but it was a war. Don't act as if Bieber wasn't getting hit. He he got hit like one or twice with clean shots. He I, got I hit with a jab. And he got hit. It. He got hit, especially when Cloud would use that one-two down the middle. But again, like I said earlier, listen, I'm very impressed. You don't have to think that I'm debating you here. Like he would hit Cloud on the fucking shoulder, and it would hurt Cloud. You know, and it forced right, him to be it's more just, active. It's not just the power, though, because again, these guys—they're not like Maidana or Lucas Matisse. I mean, these guys are former world champions. You know, like to be a former world champion—that's all technique right there. You know what I mean? Um, like, look at the footwork and the feints, and, like, they're not like Brandon Rios, because Brandon Rios, you know, wouldn't even medal, uh, you know, I mean, it wouldn't even medal at the world stage, let alone medal at the, at the Nationals uh, in, in the U.S., you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, technically, if they fight each other, they're not going to stand there, you hit me, I hit you. It, you're going you're gonna to see a technical, uh, 
a really, really technical fight if Kovalev and Archer ever fought each other because they know, you know, each other's power. So they're not going to go and they're like, you hit me, I hit you, you know? That's like the Brandon Rio style. I don't know, man. I see two forces that are going to be forced to meet in the middle, and it's going to be what it is right in the middle. They're going to lean. They're going to they're gonna bob and weave because, yeah, they're not band and reels, but they're still going to be right there. It's going to be an inside fight. Like all Europeans fight. I mean, they fight just like Australians. I don't know why you're acting like this is something new. Well, it, it, they don't fight like Australians because the boxing school, is, uh, uh, the Russian boxing school is a little different. I mean, look at their outside boxers first and foremost. Now, the reason is... So, okay, let me, ask you, let me ask you one question, right? Do you think that either Kovalev or uh, Better Beef... How do you pronounce his name, by the way, since you're a fan? Better Beef. Okay, I was saying it right. So do, you, so, so do you think that Better Beef or Kovalev would play the boxer and use the ring? You think you're going to see some Daniel Gill... No, 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 not wrong, wrong person. Because Daniel Gill does use the ring. Uh, who you gonna see some Chris Algerian? Those guys, absolutely not. They're gonna be in the middle of the ring, waiting for one another. Do uh, you remember Kovalev's fight with Cleverly? Yes. Um, that was like, uh, I mean, the way that Kovalev set up his punches, that was straight from the outside. But so, he still was uh, stalking. That... He still was stalking. What's gonna happen when the person he's looking for? isn't running. Right, but what I'm trying to say is because they know each other so well and they fought in the amateurs and they know each other's power, they're going to be really hesitant to stand in the middle and trade. You're going to see a really tactic, tactical, technical fight. Uh, now, here's the thing. The reason why you see them knocking guys out, yeah, they have freakish power, because those guys, don't, don't, they don't have the skills to try to outbox them like an Andre Ward, for a Hopkins, so they don't need to use their boxing skills. You know, they just walk kind of like, they just walk right through them. But the minute that you see them against a guy that can actually box, you're going to see them use more box, kind of like cleverly uh, in the first four rounds. You know, like uh, Kovalev couldn't just walk right through him. You know, it took like four or five rounds and he was out boxing him and then finally he got that shot in. Um, so, yeah, but, but then, yeah, against but some cleverly, guys, like, again, you know, but cleverly never stood there. He, he felt the power and left. That's what I'm saying, that these two guys are used to finding their men. So I just don't – you're saying, yeah, they're smart enough for one to become the boxer. I'm just asking you, which one is going to do it then? Well, they're both going to try to do it, you know? All right. All right. No, I, I, I understand what you're saying. It's professional boxing. is different. One guy is going to hit another guy. That's what I'm saying. I think it's 60-40. But what I'm trying to say is that they're not just pluggers. They, they have amazing technique. You know, uh, they're not like a Lucas Matisse or a Maidana, you know, with limited boxing skills. Um, th these guys have it both, but it just so happens they have freakish power, and in the pro ranks, yeah, you know, you, you, you use 12-ounce yes, gloves, 8-ounce gloves, you can knock someone out. That's all I'm saying. I'm you know? just excited that there's another player this intriguing. I mean, I'm, I, I just don't want to rob uh, Better Beef of this moment. He, he defeated a dude that last year was the IBF champion. That's I don't care how many losses Cloud has had since then. They've all been to uh, world-class opposition or top two. And he's never been knocked out. Those. Yeah, and he's never been knocked out. What Better Biv did was amazing, and um, I want to see what he – I mean, of course, granted, now that he did this, like there's no way he even gets a Chad Dawson. But – we never know because maybe – nah, hell no, hell no, there's no way. But just keep in mind that Jim Promotions does work with Al Heyman because of Stevenson, but I don't know. I doubt it. I mean, I doubt they'll get – yo, this kid is going to get ducked. If at 5-0 you yeah. did that to Cloud, to he was 5-0 yesterday and did that to Cloud. There's no way he doesn't get ducked, man. Oh, and, then, and then two more guys. So, yeah, Igor McKenzie. And then you also got this other guy who was on Lomachenko on the Ukrainian boxing team, bronze medalist, also light heavyweight, Alexander Gavatsk. So you got that, those two. You got Artur. You got Kovalev. You got Stevenson. Uh, and, again, if Stevenson doesn't fight any of them, those guys eventually are going to have to start fighting each other because their mentality isn't, you know, uh, like I'm going to duck you, you know. So those are the kind of guys that, like, wouldn't mind stepping into the ring with each other, you know? Yeah. 
Well, brother, let me get to some yeah, other callers, man. Right. And uh, thanks for calling in. As always, I'm glad that All you right, watched thanks, that man. fight, man. Everybody, you definitely need to check it out. It's very accessible. Google search away. Don't ever let the fact that you don't have a cable provider, you know, rob you of an opportunity to watch uh, some greatness in this sport, whether that be a fight or a fighter. 917, you're live. Who's this? Hey, what's up? Uh, Jay from New York. Jay, what's going on, brother? Not much. Just, uh, I say I saw that fight, the uh, Cloud fight. That was a good fight. Um, I don't know, man. He knocked him out real quick. Uh, did you guys talk about what do you, what do you think uh, the chances are that guy might have been juicing or something? Because he was hitting hard, man. And I know I don't know about the regulations on. I mean, I know you want to give him his credit, but uh, you know, I hear I hear people yeah, talking man. about it. Maybe maybe it's just some hate. I don't know, but uh, I don't know. That's what uh, interesting. I, I haven't heard of anything, but until he tests positive, that shit was all <laughs> him to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I gotta, we got to give him credit, man. And you know it's making the sport more interesting, especially at that division. So, I mean, I'm all for it. So I'm definitely going to be uh, watching out for that guy. Um, all right, no, that's all, man. Just want to a comment real quick. All right, brother, thank you. Um, I know earlier in the show I said that this couldn't be possible without B, but I lied. It's also not possible, possible without our writers. Man, listen, Dan did an excellent job, um, you know, with that – Arthur Abraham fight because uh, we also watched that fight and we also have to cover that fight. And listen, th I did not want to watch this and I didn't stick around for this one, I'll be honest. Arthur Abraham to me is still the same old Arthur Abraham from very many years ago who could be easily outboxed by someone who chooses to give the uh, you know activity necessary to continue to force Arthur Abraham to fight behind that robotic idiotic uh, high European guard that he uses. Uh, Paul Smith Jr., I remember people like, oh, Ness, he's a Ness bitch, big super middleweight. Man, that dude was horrible. Nothing that he did impress me at all. He was very inaccurate. Uh, listen, I don't even know... I don't even know how the fuck Arthur Abraham does it. Like, I remember when he was the 160-pound champ a bunch of years ago, and he never fucking fought Pavlik, and the only name on his resume was fucking Edison Miranda, and I think, like, Sam Solomon. Nobody gives a fuck about Arthur Abraham then. Not me, anyway. This is my personal feelings. My personal feelings. When he got to the Super 6, he was exposed. He was exposed as a fucking bum. Everybody was beating him up, and some of the guys just had 14 and 15 fights, for God's sakes. And we're talking about a, a, a ex-former champ. He was getting battered in every fight, whether he won or lost. He was getting battered. And okay, yeah, that's expected when you're facing high-level opposition. But again, some of those guys wasn't even supposed to be there. They wasn't even high-level. They were. That was their 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 coming out parties. Okay, so Arthur Abraham did the same old bullshit from the Paul, I mean, from the Darrell fight and the Frotch fights and every other fight that he's had last night versus Paul Smith. Uh, the referee, I mean, the judge was ridiculous with the scoring, but at the end of the day, Paul Smith lost anyway. Because he, if Arthur Abraham is bad, this other dude, listen, man, oh my God. It was interesting because Paul Paul Smith was like, excuse me, Arthur Abraham was like the lesser of two evils, because at least his shots when they did touch Smith, they moved him a little bit. Paul Smith really didn't throw a ton, and uh, you know there were times when he would punch, but it, he just couldn't sustain a, a real steady pace throughout the course of the fight. And uh, you know you could see the difference in power. I mean, Abraham would touch him and move him. He would make him feel uncomfortable. Whereas uh, Smith, everything Smith threw Abraham was just walking right through. So it was sort of like a nick, a nip and tuck type fight. But uh, like you said, not a lot of action. Both guys were uh, just really, really economical. And when you have a fight like that, two guys being economical, um, and add to the fact that they were economical but not very accurate, and not, and, and you got one guy not landing significant punches. That's the recipe for a very uneventful fight, and that's what we got yesterday. I bailed. I bailed on that fight immediately. Yeah. Like I got to like the seventh round, 
and somebody told me about the Chavez. Um, oh, well, DJ DJ Cruz told me about the Chavez. Yeah. Alvarez fight, and I bail. I can't take that shit, man. I can't, but man, I, I don't understand how Arthur Abraham does it. How does he keep getting these belts and not having to face anybody? Like he's fought Stieglitz twice. Now this dude, like he 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 somehow he doesn't fight. The rest of the 106. Why isn't he fighting Carl Frotch, Andre Ward, Edwin Rodriguez, whoever, whoever's Chad? I'd, I'd like to see him fight. I'd like to see him fight Andre Durell again. That would be very interesting. Somebody. Why is he fighting people we never even heard of? Like again, I know that Paul Smith. Uh, some of our listeners put me on him a long time ago, but come on, like he wasn't even ready. How did? How old is Abraham at this point, Beep? Uh, like 34, I think. Really? That young? Yeah. Wow. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. I'm almost positive he's 34. I could be wrong. Let me look it up real quick. I'll find it. All right. So I wanted to get to, uh, you know, another popular country that listens to the show. And is this, uh, this is an iTunes review and it goes, uh, from, comes from Canada and it's Kamal Hilton. I believe he says, greetings from the North of the border. I'm a recent listener to the boxing voice. And after listening for five minutes, I was sold. The biggest compliment I can give is that this, that is that this is real while also being entertaining and informative. You you can't say that about most shows, particularly those that are mainstream. You guys are dropping knowledge on me every show. Someone uh, who's in between a casual and diehard fan, keep it up. You've earned my support. Thanks. Uh, so I just wanted to get to you know a couple of countries because, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't aware that all this time I had been uh, truly mostly reading American reviews. I didn't know I had to sign out. Yeah, he's 34. 34 years old for um, Arthur Abraham. So let me, let me give you guys the results for those that use us for your news as uh, wrapped up in a box with a little bow on top. But for those of you that can't wait, listen, we're pumping out stories every day. As dedicated as you see me and Beeb on this show today, there's writers that are putting in work, grinding the pavement. Plus, you know that, you know, me and Beeb are doing interviews out there all the time. Look, Beeb did that, Sugar Ray Leonard. Like I said, Dan did that recap. And there's other writers. You got to check out James Lopez, James Mayer. There's a bunch of writers. Victor yeah. Salazar, we're bringing you news. Simon. Hey, listen, we're, we're not joking here. We, we, we're getting a Simon's lot of outstanding. for a reason. Simon coming all the way from the UK as well. So we're international. Ryan O'Hara. Don't just wait for the podcast, but we're going to be bringing you podcasts probably every day as well. Luki, no, Luki's okay. writing too. Uh, some more for these recaps. Juan Carlos Payano defeated and upset Anselmo Moreno uh, in a technical, a six-round technical decision. Um, also, of course, the Arthur Abraham defeated Paul Smith in a 12-round unanimous decision for Abraham's WBO Superweight Middleweight title. Um, also, Dennis Lebedev uh, defeated Paul. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Um, who else? Derry Jean we talked about, and that he, he also won that fight by fifth round TKO because I know we touched on these fights and we didn't even tell you the outcome. And uh, the one that is most important and we should keep your eyes out for Art Tur, better be better be uh, destroys Tavares Cloud in two rounds. I mean, there were four or three knockdowns in the first uh, round alone, and it wasn't like overwhelming. Like, oh, he came out the gate and he just put so much wild pressure on to Cloud. No, he systematically destroyed Cloud in a matter of seconds, and then in the second round, continue to do that. Um, so, yeah, man, uh, just wanted to give you those results and uh, also a little bit of piece of news. We're going to take some calls real quick, but a little piece of news. Saddam Ali um, is going to be fighting Luis Carlos and Bragu. And I know that we touched that on a few other podcasts, but uh, it looks like this is official. Um, but before we get into that, let me get to some callers here. We got a we got a caller by the name of Live, and that's because he's using Skype. So I don't know if it's MVG, MV2 or my boy Ari or it could be Roos. Who's this? It's MV2. MV2. With the blood of a Scottish warrior coursing through his veins, this man proclaimed... I fucking love boxing. Yep. 
are for better beast. They've got another one. Better beast. Fucking greedy yes. Bastard. Yeah, but but you see, better. I'm on the bandwagon on this one, Chew, simply because he's already fought somebody right from the gate. He didn't take the slow route like Golovkin and Kovalev. No. Right out the bat, the bat, this motherfucker said, I'm ready. And and he proved it. He didn't do like Lomachenko and choke. He ain't do that. I mean, that, that's harsh because Lomachenko fought someone of a higher caliber. No, Salido. no, 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 no. Salido has 11 losses. Salido could be beat. And... Cloud has never been knocked out. Look, don't even do that because Better Babe, he fucking put on a masterful performance. He, I mean, listen, he outdid himself. I know, I know, I know that his team didn't even expect that sort of an outcome. That was a shellacking. Man, I, I, you're trying, you're trying to get to me by bringing in Lomachenko, who you know I love, I love Lomachenko, a great well, player. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to touch a chord. I'm just saying this is the <laughs> type of thing. Like we have to hold it to that standard. Like this is a guy from another country came out of nowhere and said, "Look, I'm that good. Give me a shot." And yeah, yeah, Lomachenko fought Salido at the time that was a champion. Okay, but um. No, he got 11 losses or 13 losses. I mean, guys have destroyed it, uh, Orlando Salido, you know? Um, can, can I can I jump in real quick, though? A lot of those losses when was when Salido was young, too. I mean, I think Salido's a very, very, very credible, solid fighter, in my opinion, regardless, regardless of the losses. No, absolutely, but he can be beat bad. Yeah, Garcia, Garcia gave him a beating. That is true. Uh -huh. And Gamboa handled no, no, him. No, 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 Gamboa no. handled him fairly well. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, he, he yeah he had his moments in the Gamboa fight though. Yeah, but he got. I mean, outside of what two rounds, Gamboa was pitching a shutout. Probably. Yeah, but G Gamboa won. At won, least won eight Gamboa won a lot more rounds, and in the scorecard, yeah, it was lopsided. But those were very hard fought rounds. I thought. I thought he was making Gamboa very uncomfortable in that fight. My opinion. He did. He did. I'll give him credit because I remember there. Was, I think there was even an illegal blow on Gamboa's part. But the point is, better be didn't struggle. He ran through. Chu, Chu, did you want to say something to that point? I heard you say something, Chu. Go ahead. No, uh, no, Beep. I wanted to say that a. Uh, you said that Gas Garcia handled Salido, but Salido made him quit. Yeah, you 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 have a problem with him stopping after the broken nose, even even with the headbutt. You. I understand what you're saying. I mean, you think that, uh, you know, he took the you know, easy way out because it was a headbutt. And, and, I, I could see both sides of that. I mean, and uh, he, did, he did quit. I mean, it's not even a. Yeah. He, 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 he didn't want to continue. He didn't want to continue with the broken nose. I, I, I understand that. I'll give you just a little bit of credit on that now since we've seen Salido, you know, in last week get up off the ground a couple of times and the fight not be stopped and him be able to win. So now we know that, yeah, Garcia knocked Salido down four times. That doesn't mean that in the 12th round he would have still been the winner. So, yeah, I respect that. But, again, let's not get – off topic, let's stick on the Canadians. Derry Jean and Better Beef definitely entertained us in a week that, you know, if you're not a diehard, because I didn't even fuck, I don't even consider myself a diehard. Thank God for my followers at Nest GTO if you want to follow me. Thank God for you guys because I wouldn't be knowing about none of these guys. I just don't have the time to go look them out, look, seek them. But you make it easy. You send me links. And as you can see, I don't ignore anybody. I fucking, I, I've been watching these fights and I'm happy. I'm happy, man. I was happy I got to catch that Orlando Salido fight, and, and then this Better Beef character, oh, man, I can't wait for him to beat up Kovalev again. No, man, it's not going to happen, but <laughs> Kovalev, I think, beats him still. But the, the, the point I wanted to make is, and then I'll let you guys go, this is a fucking bad time for boxing. Why? And these guys coming in from me, for me, no, I mean, there's, there's fuck all happening. Where's the fights? You know what I mean? There's no fights at the moment. Man, I just and watched a great fight last night. Listen, we, we can't – that's what we got to do. We got to get back to loving our sport. We can't get caught up in the politics. I know that some weeks I do and because I'm a drama queen. I love – I told you I love reality TV. I'm a junkie. But you guys, yo, forget the Al Heyman and the boxing politics. When you got, got – look, better be he, – he impressed. 
He impressed. And if and if the Ukraine and Russia and 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 even China, for God's sakes, could keep producing good fights, well, fuck them and let's keep watching these guys because there's fights. Chocolatico impressed me two weeks ago. I mean, I'm gonna find something to watch. I don't care that the schedule says. There's nothing on HBO and Showtime. So I don't think boxing is in a bad place. There's a lot of excitement for me. I mean, I was excited last night. That shit, that shit made me binge watch till 6.30 this morning. I found numerous things on Better Bev because he impressed me. So I don't know what boxing is. You always uh, come on here talking about boxing's dying. You need to get a new soul, my friend. Every time you come, it seems to be at its best point, in my opinion. How many how many hours of fights? This is the worst year in boxing for Not a for me. time. I, listen, at the end of the year, I just was able to uncover a possible gem. Last night was that. How is this a bad time? How many hours? He's in Canada, beep. Those guys fight every fucking month. Let, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question, Ness. How many hours of boxing did you watch yesterday and and today combined? I, I don't even know. I just watched all those fights. I watched the child. And I gotta, fight. And I gotta take my hat off to you because you've you've expanded your 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 uh, your knowledge, not your knowledge of box, but you expanded your viewership of boxing. And now you're going out there and you're watching Canadians, you're watching UK fighters. Yeah. And now I'm starting to see you have a better appreciation. For other fighters besides just American fighters, because of of what you've been doing lately, and I gotta commend you for that. Well, you know, it, it doesn't change the fact that I'm still going to always want to see these guys that are entertaining us now, the Lomachenkos, the Kovalevs, the Gennadys, the Better Bivs, versus a Whitaker. I need to see you versus a Purnell. Give me that too. But I'm not going to be a sourpuss like MV Chu because I don't have that. And instead, I'll appreciate what I do have. Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to say one thing. It may have been a kind of a downer in the United States but if you look at a lot of these UK fights and a lot of these Canadian fights I think worldwide boxing did very well am I wrong no I think it did great I think it did great I think that uh, some of you guys that are diehards that that want to voice your opinion you need to email us because we need writers because we didn't even have a recap for this better be fight and that's because we're lacking the manpower which is you and uh, get out there and give us an email, man. Listen, you know, get chatted up with Beeb. And uh, this was an awesome fight. This is an awesome guy that you guys just discovered. I did the hard work for you. I went back and watched his career and researched him. I'm giving you the stamp of approval. That's the fucking stamp, okay? As long as he fights guys on the cloud level, you're going to be in for a treat. If he fights anything under that, you're going to get a first-round knockout without a doubt. This guy is is fireworks. Now I'm not saying he's gonna beat Stevenson or Bernard or anything, but I, hey, they give you him versus Karl Marat, take it. They give you him versus Bebut Shumanov, take it. They give you him versus Dawson, take it and love it. Does he beat Dawson right now? Man, if he if he fights the Dawson that Stevenson fought. Which I, you know, that you know, no extreme fight didn't show me any different. That that Dawson's any different. Um, hell yeah! Matter of fact, it doesn't even matter what version of Dawson he beats. I mean, he fights because this dude, the punches ain't gonna hurt him. Dawson's punches ain't gonna. He didn't walk Dawson down and beat the brakes off of him. It is gonna be so interesting seeing him. See if they throw him in there with the Campillo. See if they throw him in there with the Shumanov. See if they throw him in there with the Murat. It's only a listen. The only way Campillo survives this fight if they make it an eight rounder. That may then maybe. But yeah. this dude is a fucking destroy missile. Dude. Am I right, M? Oh, he's a he's a beast. He's a fucking he, he's animal. He beat everyone in the amateurs, man. He's an animal. Uh, he's an absolute beast. He's an animal. He's he's gonna kill everybody. And, uh, now now we gotta now we gotta ask ourselves: Can the kid go rounds? I think he I think he's been a ten rounds. Oh, I'm not. No, he's never been ten rounds. No. So now now the question is: We gotta ask ourselves: Can can the kid go rounds? Because all his all his fights ended in knockout. He's he's another light heavyweight version of a Deontay Wilder. 
Yeah, but the thing is, like I said, they're sparring footage with him and Pascal, so at least he's getting elite level sparring as well. So he's probably, you know, getting the endurance in training where he's supposed to. Um, let's bring on the encyclopedia, man. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nelson. No, motherfucker, I didn't say my name was was different. What the fuck? No, uh, you said your name was Nelson. No, I didn't. You need to uh, clean your motherfucking ears out, nigga. We gotta get you a new intro for real. Jeez. I love that. I love that shit, man. <laughs> that Come on, must. Man. You know that shit gets people hyped. That's like one of the best of all times. Now, the you gotta be very excited. I mean, I know you know you. I know you like the little guys, but I mean, just a new player like this, Better Bev showed that he's fucking better than a bunch. Yeah, he looks pretty good, man. He definitely looks pretty good. You know, I didn't necessarily expect him to do that to Cloud or do that to Cloud that quickly. But I mean, to be honest, I, I haven't really thought that highly of Cloud like the last uh, year or so. You know, Cloud. Cloud is disappointing. I used to be a big fan of Cloud. Yeah, but, but regardless, he's not, he's and I said not the that he once was. Listen, I said that he lost his last four. Okay, so what? He lost. Look at the people he lost to. It's not bad to lose to them so that doesn't put you on the like you don't fall from losing to fucking bernard hopkins um or adonis stevenson to losing to five and oh fighters regardless of what this is this kid and again like i said guys it wasn't like he was lomachenko that lomachenko fought his first fight was salito his second fight was gary russell right no this motherfucker been fighting cab drivers before he fought Cloud. Like, there's no indication. There was none. Like, Lomachenko said, I'm the fucking truth. Give me Salito. Okay, I didn't do it then. So what? I'm still good. Who is it? Gary Russell? Put him in the ring with me. No, this dude, he didn't come out and, and try to impress us on his first couple. He got his feet wet versus... Fucking the bartender, the gardener, the pool boy, all those fucking dudes. And then he just jumped up versus Cloud. Again, to me, this is fucking crazy. So crazy that it's amazing. Well, I mean, I'd be willing to bet that even just on the business side, it's hard to get a fight of that caliber that early in your career. You at least have to, you know, run through a few tomato cans, you know, part-time house painters and contractors and shit. Yeah, but again, get, I, I know, want you to guys, to, you, you got to keep it in perspective. Not even Rigandow. Rigandow, what? His eighth fight is when he fought a named person, right? This dude was fighting like Billy Lyle and shit in, in Ireland. Like, you know what I'm saying? He fought a couple of bullshit names before he fought Cordoba. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of... Yeah. Gamboa did this. No one, you know, has come out like Lomachenko and this dude. Bottom fucking line. And and then again, yeah, Lomachenko no, was like different. The, the step up was major. Yeah, no, but again, for Lomachenko was different. That's why I don't agree with you because Lomachenko, like I said, he said I'm the man by taking on Salido. Not this guy. This guy took a different approach, and it felt like the fight. Like it, I don't know the way that this happened because it makes absolutely no sense again because Better Bad's record doesn't indicate that they thought he was going to be a standout, right? So to me, it feels like maybe Cloud was like, man, I need a tune-up. And they're like, yeah, won't you get in there with this 5-0 and fighter? And nobody told Cloud that this dude's a declarated amateur and hits like a fucking mule because it doesn't make any sense to me unless Don King served him up. I mean, he served him up. Hot. It was hot on a platter that night because he got his ass I think, beat. I think, yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. <laughs> he got beat, boy. That that really? uppercut, that uppercut probably ruined his life for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah. He got hit with a couple of nice hooks in there, too. There was that, that last hook that snapped his head back. That shit was nasty. Yo, B, this I never dude... thought I'd see Cloud get done like that. <laughs> this dude was falling forward. You know you fucked up when you fall forward. <laughs> Man, you guys got to watch that fight for real. That was an amazing yeah, fight. So, and then... Uh, Coquit Jim fought for last week. Yeah, yeah. No, that was an amazing... And that's what I'm telling Chu. He's like, oh, this is the worst time in boxing. Well, you know what? It's, 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 the, worst, crazy. it's the worst time in boxing if you only pay attention to, like, two divisions. You know, like, yeah. welterweight and welterweight and shit. You know, there's some pretty fucking good matchups going on as a lot of the oh, well. divisions. Yeah, but th those aren't the... No, no one gives a fuck about these small divisions. 
Nah, that's honest. not true. I mean, that's oh, not so true. Light 118. Light heavyweight small now, Chu? Light heavyweight small? No, light heavyweight. We're not talking about light heavyweight. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, actually we were. Actually, we, we were. We were talking about... Ooh! Ooh! ooh. You're referencing the small guys. All right, guys, look, I gotta, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tell you, I'm gonna just tell you, hold on one sec, I'm gonna mute you guys for a second. Listen, um, I know my man, Wasan, he's helping me out, I'm trying to quit smoking after this, uh, you know, wisdom tooth pulling, but I'm about to leave you guys and go get it. Because I'm breaking right now. I need a cigarette. So I'm going to bring on uh, Nelta for you, Beeb. I'll be right back. But again, right. your tweets are still motivational, and I and I do desire them. Listen, I, I've only had one cigarette today. That's good. That's that's a big improvement. We're going we're gonna to cycle it down, just like the roids, baby. Yeah, so... You're going to cycle off them? Yeah. So go ahead, man. Now... What do you think was the fight of the weekend, Neil? Was it the cloud fight or was it uh, Chavez fight? There was like so many fights that just kind of flew underneath the radar. We didn't think that uh, they were going to be good fights. What did you enjoy the most? Um, to be honest, I mean, probably I guess probably the the better be you know the, uh, because it showed me something new. It just showed me something new. You know, I also enjoyed. I mean, just as a guilty pleasure, because I'm not going to lie, it's a guilty pleasure. Uh, seeing Ricardo Mayorga and Sam Peter again, because I was a big fan of those guys. I mean, I know that <laughs> beyond past it, but it's just fun to see them again. Talk about those two fights, because I don't, I don't think we brought them up yet, and uh, I don't think many people yeah, watched those both, fights. They were both first round knockouts. They were both fight, you know, pretty much chumps. Mayorga fought some dude from the Midwest, took him out in the first round. He didn't even need the go rounds, like you know, his classic sound fight. And then Sam Peter was fighting this really fat dude. Look like he's freaking, he like, he straight up, he kind of looked like the dude from uh, Fight Night Round 3, the really fat guy that you can play, yeah, yeah. like the fake character. <laughs> and yeah, I got you. Like working that guy now, too, the, a couple overhand, right? I wouldn't even watch the Sam Peters fight. Like, Sam Peters would have to beat someone the way Better Bev did for me to watch him again. Mm -hmm. Like, he's mad old and been <sighs> losing forever. Like, why well, are you even wasting time? He's not, he's time? not even that old. He's not even that old. He's only 34. Uh, B Vic sent a text saying that King and Michael were co-promoting co uh, Cloud after the Stevenson fight. And I guess that's why uh, Cloud kept getting big uh, fights. But, uh, yeah, man, that better Bev kid is serious. But we got some other headlines that we need to talk about. Like I was saying, Louis Calazabragu, he's going to be taking on Saddam Ali. And, man, um, I don't know how to feel about this. Saddam Ali has not returned my calls. His father told me they were going to call me a couple of days ago. They wanted to make sure that this was official before they talked, and uh, guess not. But they definitely talked to um, uh, ESPN and, and Carl Moretti as well. So they said hopefully this is the first of many fights to be made with Golden Boy. Top-ranked Vice President Carl Moretti told ESPN, adding that the negotiations about with uh, Golden Boy Vice President Eric Gomez was easy. So the negotiations uh, between Top Rank and Golden Boy were good to set up this Luis Carlos Abregu and Saddam Ali fight. Now, Saddam Ali's a 2008 U.S. Olympian, but he's never been on this level. This is, this is a big leap right here. And um, I know that we may or may not overrate Abregu because, again, who is Abregu? Outside of the loss to Bradley, his biggest win is who? Thomas DeLorme, Richard Gutierrez, like, who did he really be besides being able to not really fight that much every year, fight every now and again, and win because he is super sloppy. Like, he's no Marcos Maidana or Lucas Matisse. He's a lot more raw, in my opinion. His punches are more wide, and his defense is a lot worse compared to those guys. I don't know. Um... But uh, yeah, he doesn't have the same kind of setup. The best sparring uh, that Abregu ever got was against Saddam Ali, according to uh, Sean Gibson, who also uh, manages um, you know guys like Vasquez and uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. Um, because I know that Abregu have fought over here in New York City or uh, well Verona, New York. So yeah, maybe they used Saddam Ali one time to get him ready for the Delorme fight. But again. 
who has Abergu fought? He lost to Bradley. Like, that's all that he is. So is this a too big of a step, B, for Ali? Or is Lewis Abergu just overrated? No, I think it's a perfect fight for Ali. I mean, he's at that point where we need to see him go up against guys like Abergu. And it's very interesting. I, I think that, you know, it's a, it's going to be a tough fight for Ali. But I think... I think he may be able to pull it out, but I don't think it's you know I wouldn't be shocked if 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 uh, Abergu beat him, but I'm gonna I'm gonna slightly favor Ali, and I I just think that both guys like to use distance and stuff, but I think Ali may be a little quicker, maybe a little bit more athletic, and uh, you know the power may be comparable. It's just a really really good evenly matched um, competitive type fight, and I, I'm really looking forward to it. Now now the uh, when it comes to Ali, I mean, he's never, I mean, Beep feels like that he should be on this level, but he's never fought anybody, you know, because again, I'm not, over, we don't have to overrate Abregu to say that he's been in with better competition than Saddam Ali. Jeremy Bryant was the best guy John, uh, that, you know, Saddam Ali fought, and he was a local Patterson fighter. He, you know, he wasn't like this big thing. Yeah, man, and he barely got out of that fight with a win, to be honest. Yeah, that was that yeah. was a very, very interesting that, that fight, wasn't it? down in the ninth round that he scored on Bryant, saved him in that fight. You know, this is a tough fight, man. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, he says that he beat a Canadian dude, too. I don't know what Canadian dude that is. Oh, oh, he saw my Abergu beat uh, uh, Antoine Declarie, probably. Yeah, but again, Declarie, you know, a good prospect that we thought was good while he was undefeated, but after he lost to Abergu, he kept losing. I mean, he well, did I mean, look here, good. Thing, he did look good in his uh, last fight, though. I seen that last fight. He looked real good. He looked stronger, too. Right, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. Abergu, Abergu has better wins than Ali. Ali doesn't have wins that stack up yes. to the level of Abergu. So that's that's, that's, that's for sure. But again, but again, which wins are you giving him credit for? Who? Well, well I mean, shit, the Lord man has won. That's it? Terry a is, prospect? Is, is better than Brian? Who? Oh, yeah. Huh? Decla I said Decla I don't know. And, and, I don't know. Lorme are both better no, than Brian. And, 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 no, no. I can't agree with that. I think that Jeremy, uh, um, that dude, uh, whatever his last name is. Jeremy Bryant? Yeah, I think Jeremy Bryant and Antoine Declarie is a 50-50 fight. No, Declarie would beat, would beat Bryant. What, what's on his record indicated that? Who did he beat? Um, he's just, I can just see he's, he's just a, a, the type of style that he brings is not good for Brian. He, Brian's not good against pressure guys. And, and this Decorie guy can punch a little bit too. Brian's been stopped a few times. I, I mean, I like Brian, don't get me wrong, but I, I, I think it's a tough style matchup for him. I, I would pick Decorie over Brian. He can't punch, Beeb. He's got a 30% KO ratio. He can't um, he's heavy handed though. I, I've seen, I've seen him hit guys. He, he's, he's, Decorie has better wins than Brian does. Yeah, I I don't see the wins. I'm looking at his record. Decorie's got a Decorie's got a good right hand, man. I mean, he can get your attention. I don't know. You guys must ain't seen his last fight. Those guys were going to war, and they both had the same level of power. That's why you know the fight was that entertaining. But I don't know what power you got. Well, hey, let's thing. take it out. Let's hold on. Uh, let me take it out to the streets and see whatever else. I think we got a lot of people here. We got to get to, and uh, this might be my boy. Hold up. Sit up. I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah. To all the killers and a hundred I got you stuck off the realness. We be the infamous, you heard of us. Official Queen's Bridge murderers. Shout out the roots for that intro. So is that is that QB or what? Oh man, he in the he in a Holland tunnel right now. Uh, 210, you're live. Who's this? What's up, yo? This is Andre the Giant, man. I'm back. What's up, brother? Talk to me. Hey. Um, I just had a question, man. I know this is an old subject, but about the Showtime and HBO deals, who does Showtime have as far as pay-per-view stars after Mayweather leaves? Because HBO has Canelo, Pacquiao, they have to build Timothy them. Bradley, Marquez. They have to build them, brother. That's that's the best way to answer it. They have none. They would have to build Brona, build Thurman, and and Brook, and and build. And they, I don't even think they could get Brook because he's he's tied with Sky. One, two, who's Mayweather going to fight? In two more fights, he's gone. 
Mayweather has he's got bigger problems. He's got to decide if he's gonna fight Manny Pacquiao in May in order for Canelo not look like the Broad Street fucking bully and take May fifth from him. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. The only people I see him out there being able to fight is Amir Khan and Danny Garcia if he chooses not to deal with any top ranked people. But Ness, can I? He can fight. It's just whether he wants to or not. Can I ask you a question, Ness? Yeah. yeah. Now, does that? That May 5th Canelo fight is not going to be pay-per-view. It's going to be on regular HBO. Oh, that, that should be the Cotto fight. Could they negotiate in time? Oh, so, so it could be the Cotto fight, and it could be on pay-per-view. No, it will be on pay-per-view. The free okay. fight is in December. Now, let me ask you this. If you're a cable provider, obviously you're not going to put both fights on. Do you... Do you take that Cotto fight over that Mayweather fight? Unless well, it's the thing, it's they're gonna buy the most compelling fight because, like I said a few yeah. shows ago, the betting line was even upset with the Mayweather results. They're not getting the normal yeah. bets. They said they made less money this time than ever, so they're gonna go with Cotto. So let me ask you this though: so if Mayweather doesn't, if Mayweather doesn't fight Pacquiao next, then 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 his fight may not be on pay per view. I mean, unless. They want a chance Amir Khan to go as, like, I'm sure they, I don't know how it works. We all going to be clear that Nesta does not know how it works. But I'm assuming they have to both submit their offers. Top ranking Golden Boy is going to say Canelo versus Cotto. And Mayweather is going to say Mayweather versus Khan. And I guess it's up to the television providers to decide which one they're going to go with. In my opinion, why would they go with Khan? Yeah. Well, let me, one last question so you can let the callers in. Will Mayweather Promotions work with... They're not going to work with Golden Boy Promotions in the next fight then? Is well, that... Mayweather... See, I was... I was, uh, You know, th there's an interview that Mayweather did that he said he's hopeful. I didn't know that, but now I know. So we're going to do a show later in the week about that, but... He's hopeful about what? About Manny fighting in May. Okay. And that's his words, and I'm going to have the sound bite. I got it now, but again, we're going to do that during the week. So remember to follow us on Blog Talk if you want to be notified of the show. Check the email settings in there. Make sure you get an email whenever we go live. I know some of you were saying that you weren't getting emails, but also if you subscribe to us on YouTube, you'll get a notification when we go live because we do the simulcast like no other show. Remember that. So let's get to some callers here. Aerodynamic, who's this? Yeah, hey, man. It's me, Alejandro from Canada. Canada. Alejandro, what's up? Oh, man, Canada in the building. First time we could be happy for you, brother. You guys produced action last night. I know, eh? I'm pretty excited about that Russian guy. Did you see? Did you hear about his amateur career, beating Kovalev and like, Ismail Sulak and all those guys? I sure did, brother. I'm just as excited as you are, man. I, I, I stood up all night last night, so 6.30 in the morning watching that guy. Interviews, sparring, fights, everything. I'm all caught up and ready for more. Yeah, man, I can't wait till he starts mixing it up with the big names and stuff like that in that division. But hey, man, you were going off the hook praising this guy. Okay, yeah, he, I'm pretty excited too, but you can't compare him to Lomachenko. Lomachenko went against Orlando Salido in his second fight. Yeah. This is his sixth fight. Yeah, Not yeah, but this is the difference. This is the difference, Canada. Lomachenko came out the box and fought Salido, right? So he told you, I'm I'm a bad man. I want Salido now. This guy, he fought five bums. Five bums. There's no lying there. No one is going to call in during the weeks and say, oh, well, it, Billy Bailey was a former world champion. No, these guys were bums. I watched them. I looked at the fights. They had beer bellies, jiggly fucking titties. They were horrible. <laughs> They were horrible. And then he just stepped up to Cloud and beat the shit out of Cloud. Lomachenko struggled, and he did okay versus Russell. He didn't beat the shit out of Russell. This dude dropped fucking Cloud like four times or five times. Yeah, he, was hitting, yeah, times. he was hitting Cloud like he had metal in his... Man, this shit looked like a fucking... He looked like an X-Men mutant in that ring oh, beating yeah. the shit out of Cloud. And he was taking some good punches, too, from Cloud. I'm surprised. He looks like he has a chin, too. Yes, man. He looks like the goods, brother. Canada, man, thanks yeah, for I, calling in. You got anything else for us? Let me tell you something else. Wait up, wait up. I got something for you. What do you think about the uh, Estevern and Wilder fight going to first bid? There's no deal for it yet. Yeah, man, it's going to have to go to first bid, and it's going to look like but maybe... But what if, like, Rock Nation 
swoops in and tries to take another Al Heyman fighter. And do you think Wilder will turn on the fight if Rock Nation wins the first bid? Well, if Rock Nation wins the first bid, then we can. It's like a game of chess. We're gonna have to wait for Al Heyman to make his move because all indication points to Al Heyman doing another move and pick. If he stopped the Peter Quillen fight, why is he going to give Rock Nation an Ante Wilder fight? That's just my opinion. We're going to have to wait to see how it plays out. 917, you're live. Who's this? Hey, what's going on? This is Antonio. Antonio, what up, brother? Man, you got a lot of shit going on back there. <laughs> no, but I just want to go back to that um, the Dom Ali uh, versus Abrego fight, man. I just feel like Golden Boy, man. I feel like Golden Boy disturbing up Ali. You know, I feel like, um, you know, Ali's not really marketable, you know, for Golden Boy. So I honestly really think they're going to, they're serving him up, man. I for don't, Aubrey, make I don't think that's it. true. Um, I don't think that's true. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, and I'm going to explain it to you. And then there's facts to back up. Let, let, let me just say this, though. Let me just say this, though. Tomas Delorme had a better chance at beating Aubrey Gu than Salam Sa Sa Ali has, man. No, well, I again, mean, again, that's also so, not true. Salam so Ali... Saddam Ali was a better amateur than Thomas DeLorme. Uh, Thomas DeLorme is a good amateur, but he came from Puerto Rico. It's a small pool. You know, De uh, Abrego excuse me, uh, Ali was international. He was on the U.S. team. Ali also has an upside because when he used to fight on the Thomas Adamic cards and the Zab Judas cards, he had a good uh, following. And now that he's been on a couple of these Barkley cards, he's had a good following. And and remember, this is also a kid that promoted himself. There was times when he put on two shows himself in the Aviator in Brooklyn and sold that out with uh you know four thousand plus. So Saddam Ali does have some upside. He's he, he's also a Pakistanian, I believe, or. I don't know, but he's definitely Muslim. There's a lot of angles that they can go, and the New York Barkley Center side is definitely that side. And if he can get this win, then, yeah, he looks a whole lot better, especially to those New York uh, fans. Introducing the hard-hitting ringside, Robbie. Wow, what a show. Um, <laughs> um, let's see, where do I begin here? Number one. I don't look. I think we can use the amateur uh, results as a bar barometer, but I don't think we should make a big deal out of out of the amateur results because pro boxing is completely different. Let's see what some of these guys that we're talking about actually do in their professional careers. Um, you know, because uh, uh, we we as diehard boxing fans have to pay attention to what they're doing now, not what they did in their Olympic days or amateur days. Uh, they're actually getting paychecks now, so let's pay, let's pay attention to what they're doing now. Uh, number two, um, I don't think we can take Julio Cesar Chavez seriously until he actually agrees to a fight instead of all this. They, they make him multiple offers, and he finds one way or another to refuse. Same with James Kirkland. Uh, you, you 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 can't take a guy like Kirkland seriously either for for uh, continuously ducking out of a fight. There's nothing wrong with him fighting Gabriel Rosado. That would have been a great undercard fight to lead up to Hopkins Kovalev. Now I wonder how they're going to fill that spot. Um, as far as the uh, pay-per-view possibilities, the only way uh, the only way Mayweather gets to keep that May date is if he fights Pacquiao. Otherwise, that's going to belong to Canelo and Cotto. Because uh, there's no way the networks are going to buy uh, Khan Mayweather if Canelo and Cotto are, are going to be scheduled for the same time. That, that That's going to be a no-brainer. Um, you know, so uh, um, th those are some of my thoughts. All right, Robbie. Well, uh, let me get to some other people here and hit some other headlines up, man. Let's see what else we got. Um, Avalos, of course, passes up on a Rigondeaux fight and instead is Ian Frampton. Avalos could have a shot against Rigondeau and made a decent payday. Caribe's promotion sole promoter uh, since his co-promotion deal with top rank Avalos promoter expired in July. 
Uh, they won the rights to fight on September 19th. The purse bid, uh, Karibi offered 377000 including a 25% cut for Avalos. That would have had translated to a career high payday of seventy nine thousand for Avalos, and uh, he decided against it. And I and I, I can understand that. Why fight Rigondeaux for eighty thousand? Like, come on, other people probably got more to get that ass whooping. Um, but uh, yeah, Avalos instead is looking to get a Frampton fight. Um, but uh, Avalos will remain Frampton's mandatory, so he he's possibly going to be able to get a better offer from Eddie Hearn, who uh, you know he's really not that. Uh, bad of a dude, um, but Martinez made seven hundred thousand to go to Belfast and face Frampton. But he was a, a world titleist at the time. You know, he had the, uh, I think the IBF, right? Um, but yeah, so Thomas Delorme signs with Cameron Duncan. Um, I didn't, uh, you know, I seen that coming the minute he start training with uh, Robert Garcia. You know, that camp has a good relationship with Duncan. Duncan now. Uh, you know, has Garcia, Mikey Garcia, also Delorme, and also um, Abregu, Bradley, uh, Terrence Crawford. So Cameron Duncan uh, has a bit of Al Heyman in him as well. He's got some pretty good fighters there. Andre Durrell, he's going to be fighting Nick Brinson on October 8th. Nick Brinson, now uh, we know this guy, very tough, rugged kid, um, but He's always been a loser, and I don't mean a loser like literal. I mean, yeah, I mean a loser like literal, or like like losing in the ring. Not that his personality is that of a loser, but yeah, you know, he he hasn't been winning, so I don't know what to tell you. But like, comment, and subscribe us. Remember, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, do so. We're always putting up videos. We got dedicated uh, videographers in uh, you know the Bay Area. We got some in Vegas. We got some in L.A. Shout out to Fernando. Uh, follow him at Fern underscore 323. Um, that's our L.A. guy, man. He's been doing great work. You know, like I said, definitely check out the website and the YouTube channel. It's more than just what you hear on this show. This is a brand. This is a movement. And we truly, truly appreciate everyone that uh, continues to support us. Um, it's very important. Um, 803, you're live. Who's this? <laughs> 803, you're live. Who's this? All right, 646-478-3068. Uh, press 1 if you want to talk to me or Beeb. Beeb, uh, what, what's going on in the chat there, man? I'll take a peek real quick, man. Um, everyone's talking about a lot of the uh, upcoming fights. And they're just giving their opinion on things that we're saying. I, I can uh, basically read a few things here. Now they're talking about Rigo, R R R versus Lomachenko, which would be an excellent fight. Um, oh, most people are saying what, what led to that was because of uh, a about the near All right, let me get to. Uh, we actually got Fern, uh, our LA video guy. Fern, next time you gotta press one, brother, if you want to get on, because uh, if not, we don't get to see your number. But Fern, what's going on, brother? Hello. Yeah, what's up, brother? Talk to us. Yo, all right. Uh, let me correct you on a couple of things. Bradley is not with Duncan anymore. Uh, he Duncan we, are, we already know that. We already know that. And his manager is now his wife. We already know uh, that. There's a lot of one-track minded. With, there's, a, there's a lot of one-track minds here when it comes to, like, Mayweather versus Khan. And Showtime might pick it up. They could, there could be a second option. And the other option is, instead of fighting here in the States... Going over to the U.K., kind of like Manny did with uh, going to Macau, not really caring about the domestic buys, more international buys. That could work. Who, who said that? Angle heads up to Cotto Canelo. It might not, considering Showtime likes to start their pay-per-views now an hour earlier. That means the main event for Mayweather Khan can happen an hour before Canelo and Cotto, and you can still see Canelo and Cotto at, you know, an hour later. Who said that um, Cameron Duncan was still Bradley's manager on the show? We we interviewed Bradley and we talked about it with Bradley. We already knew that. Yeah, but no, it was my fault, B. But I said that he was still with Duncan. He. Was oh, okay. I, I I knew that he wasn't. Yeah, not. Yeah, no, Bradley Bradley dumped Duncan a little while ago. Yeah, we we already know that because we interviewed him. And we talked about it. If you listen to our interview with Bradley, we already talked about that. Oh yeah, no. I was just correcting that because. Oh okay, I, I didn't. I didn't hear Ness say it. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, no, nah, no worries. My bad. But, yeah, I, I still don't see why they can't do that where Showtime and HBO, same day, different pay-per-view, just Mayweather not caring about the domestic buys anymore and just going international. I think he sells pretty good in the U.K. with Khan. Nice gate. International numbers might be good. The same way that uh, Top Rank went with, uh, with Pacquiao. Yeah? Yeah, it makes sense, but Mayweather would have to want to go to the UK. Now, B, would it be the same sort of tax break that uh, Pacquiao's getting for fighting in Macau? What, if they fight in the UK? Wow, that's that's beyond my scope of knowledge, my friend. I'm sorry, I can't answer that. I know I know that the uh, the dollar is, uh, isn't worth much over in the UK, if, if, unless I'm mistaken, but I know that if you... Uh, if you bring a U.S. dollar, I think uh, the, the the British pound is worth a lot more money than a dollar right now. Not a lot more, but it's worth more. It's about one point six six five or something like that. Yeah, it's it's almost almost twice well, twice the worth of the American dollar. So, but I, I at the end of the day, I mean, if you fight over the U.K., I'm, I, you're still gonna get paid with uh, by, you know. Regardless, all this means is that Saul Canelo Alvarez has the power. And the ability with this Cotto fight to push Mayweather into doing something exactly. Well, that's that's why, you know. Again, I'll, I'm going to touch upon it briefly. That's why I say competition is good because it, for, it forces the other guy to put up a, a a a good product that you that you know he has to compete with you. Because if there was no competition, he could fight Mickey Mouse again and and. We have no choice. I mean, we have, that that'll be forced down our throats. Now with this Canelo situation, it puts pressure on him to fight maybe a Pacquiao. So that's why I, I like competition. Hey Fern, so what else you got for us, brother? Before we get to some other callers, man. And again, definitely check out Fern. Fern, give everybody your Twitter because you know he's been the one over there interviewing Pacquiao in L.A. and uh, he's gonna be at the uh, N Dom fight, bringing you some great video coverage from L.A. Like I said, the team is expanding, and it's not just one man behind the yeah. screen. This is a bunch of guys that are dedicated, and he is one of them. Excellent job, Fernando. The Twitter is a uh, F. E R N underscore three two three. That's Fern underscore three two three. That's on Twitter. Uh, Facebook. Find me at uh, Fernando Pimentel. And one other thing, it kind of hey, kind of. Fern, I am going to put you on up? the spot. I am going to put you on the spot. It's probably not ethical. We could have did it off off air, but why you didn't press De La Hoya when when you asked him about possible that's opponents? Where I was about to go right now. That, that's actually where I was about to go right now. Like, why didn't you? Why didn't you just say, "Hey, why didn't you just say, hey, the rumor is Joshua Claudia, and I don't think the fans would like a guy who hasn't fought in forever, and his comeback fight is mundane." Put him on the fucking spot next time. Oh no, don't worry. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see him October 10th. I'm gonna see him uh, next week Friday. I will get to him. There was another question I was gonna ask him too, and I was gonna get to that, and that was at the Canelo. Uh, Canelo HBO announcement press conference that kind of escaped me but came to me later. It was more like, all right, you don't want to hinder or hurt your relationship with Showtime, but yet every single Mayweather fight has been with a Golden Boy fighter. You're going to try to take Mayweather's date or go head up with it. Isn't that a conflict of interest there? Yeah, well, that's what I was saying last week. I think he did this fully knowing that he was going to ruin this relationship with not only Mayweather and Heyman, but also Espinosa. That's why I'm excited to see what happens next. Clearly something's going to happen. Yeah, but you know what the problem is? People are, just, people are getting sick of dealing with a lot of people, not everybody. Apparently it's not showtime. But just people are just getting sick of working with Mayweather because they want to put together big money fights. And obviously to do that, there's got to be some risk. And Mayweather and Heyman just want those cushy deals. They want the big money to fight guys that don't present the risk. And I think Dave Hoya realizes that, hey, if he doesn't fight Pacquiao, then there's really no fight out there that, that I'm really interested in making. And, you know, I, I could do more with Canelo. Let me build on a guy that wants to fight and, and instead of focus on a guy that doesn't want to fight big names. So that's why I think Dave Hoya is sick of the bullshit. Quick question. Let me ask you guys a quick question. I want you guys to debate it. What in the world was up with that Robert Guerrero picture with Heyman boxing over him? Oh, I didn't see it. Did you guys see, see that on Twitter? No, no. Tweet, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. 
Yeah, I'll retweet it right now. It's on Robert Guerrero's uh, Twitter. He's literally standing there with his uh, hands up. It says Heyman Boxing right on top of him, and he says getting ready, getting ready to go back to business. I'll retweet it. I'll catch it and look at it. it I was like, what the hell? Yeah, is well, Heyman all boxing? we got to do now is see his Heyman Boxing. Someone could check. Listen, you guys don't need a journalism license because it doesn't exist. You could fucking pick up the phone, call Nevada, find out if there's a registered business with a license with a promoter's license by the name of Heyman Boxing's in Nevada or any other state. Uh, if I were you, I would check Cleveland. That's where Heyman is from. Uh, look for D.C. because that's where he deals. Check Cincinnati. Check all the urban cities first and see is he preparing himself for his own promotional company. Um, we got some other callers here. We got to get to 803 Fern. Don't forget to tweet the link so I can retweet it and get it out to our fans. Uh, 803, brother, you got it? Oh, man, I can't talk over that. 609, you're live. Who's this? Yo, this is Jay Midnight from Atlantic City, baby. Brother, this sounds First time like a caller. I was about to say, all right, well, here you go. You, I hope you know Yo, how this listen, works. B, I, you... I, I got to say, I love you guys. I've been watching y'all for two years, Damn. but never called in. Beeb, I love that interview you did with Sugar Ray Leonard. That oh, was thank... beautiful. I know that's off topic, but I have to say that. Thank you I very, love... very much. I appreciate that. I really enjoyed I doing it, too. I love you guys. I just want to say that I'm fucking, like, totally, excuse me, guys. I'm totally, like, um... Uh, uh, overwhelmed with, with with the way you guys do what you do, and um, I just want to say that I, I love the show, and I, that's it. That's all I want to say, guys. Well, hold and, on, um, before you get go, to some other callers. Wait, before I'm you happy go, to, I'm, before you go, we have some new, uh, you know, things that we implemented for first time callers. So you're gonna have to reintroduce yourself after this intro. Ladies and gentlemen, right. making his professional debut. This Go is ahead. Sweet Midnight from AC, my niggas. Uh, <laughs> Big Babe, Big Ness. I love uh, Ringside Robbie, V. I love all y'all, man. Straight up and down. So Thank you guys, you very much. some other callers. I just wanted to do that, man. Thank you, very much. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thanks for calling in, man. Uh, and anybody else that feels that way, drop us a five-star review on iTunes. We greatly appreciate it. 773, you're live on the Boxer Voice. Who's this? Yeah, what's good, man? So, what Hello. up? Yeah, what's up? Hey, uh, no, I was just going to say, uh, <clears throat> you know, what if Floyd was to turn around and say, you know, hey, fuck it, I want to fight Cotto on <laughs> May 5th. Then what does Cotto do? Obviously, well, he goes the with... The thing uh, is this. Yeah. He, Listen, Canelo was offering Cotto ten million, and he wasn't on Mayweather status. Now he's got HBO backing. How much could he offer Cotto now? Yeah, Is Mayweather yeah. so gonna Cotto, pay? Cotto's Mayweather. gonna get more money to fight Canelo than he would to fight Mayweather. You know, and this is the thing. Mayweather doesn't even pay his opponents that much. Yeah, this is the thing. You know, everyone thinks, yeah, I hit the I hit the lottery when I fight Mayweather. I mean. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, if you, you can make more money fighting Pacquiao than fighting Mayweather. Not to mention Mayweather, what, uh, some of the guys, the highest they've got is $3 million. Then you got to subtract 36.9% of that for taxes. <laughs> right. Not, what, was, what was Canelo's guarantee when he fought Mayweather? Wasn't it only like $5 million? I don't know, but he had the pay-per-view upside, which which they did. Yeah, he made a lot on the back end, but I'm saying his guarantee was not that much. I thought it was ten, though. No, I heard it wasn't ten. I heard it was like. Hopefully, he check he tweet he texts us or something because he's too busy watching fool's ball. Yeah, I, I heard his guarantee was like five or six. I think it was five million, but he just got I, when they when they were saying the ten million, they were adding in the back end money, and I think he made more than ten. So. But like I like I said, Mayweather does it doesn't pay his opponents like a lot of money, man. Uh, not at Hell all. Hell no, he doesn't. And then people so talking that's what I got for us, Tom? No, I was just gonna say that um I mean this is a great thing, man, that uh Cotto and Canelo was giving Floyd some competition, you know? Because so that way I think the only fight that Floyd can make is that is that Pacquiao fight that's yeah. gonna be comparable to the Canelo Cotto yeah. fight. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's just a shame that you know, we got the pound for pound king who doesn't have that. He doesn't have that 
thing in him, you know, that he needs to be pushed in order to fight the best fights out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like it's not already instilled in him. You know, it's going to take saying that, man. Fight Cotto for him to really actually step up and say, you know. Well, we hey, don't man, know, I brother. We don't know, Tom, well, but that's, a, no, that's no, no, another saying, show theory, for another day. But the thing is, we don't know because for all we know, he could take um, May off and lie to us and say, it's like, oh, you know, I don't normally fight at this pace, so I'm going to take a rest. I'll be back in September. Nah, he's but, it, but if he, yeah, but if he, he says. even if he does that, right? He still falls in a bigger hole if Canelo does beat Cotto. Because if Canelo beats Cotto on May 5th, then September is guaranteed his. Because now there's a new exactly. golden boy in town. Well, I mean, what if it does shitty numbers, though? It won't do shitty numbers. Listen, Hell, Canelo, I mean, Canelo wait, Mayweather. Hold up, hold up. Listen, Canelo, hold Canelo on, but let me give you let me give you my up, reasoning. Yeah. Let me give you my reasoning. You debate I, it. I, Canelo Mayweather did two point two. Canelo, I mean, Cotto Mayweather did 1.5. I mean, it's obvious. Okay. Oh, okay. And Cotto, and Cotto Martinez did 350, and Canelo Lara did 300. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to make a prediction right now. I'm going to make a prediction right now. Without Mayweather, they can't even do Barrera. No, 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 no. Hold on, Nota. I'm going to make a prediction right now. If, if Canelo fights Cotto, that fight does 1.5. And I'm going to say yep. this. For Canelo to do 300 with Laura, I think that's great. We all know Laura can't well, draw was. flies to shit. Let's see. Let's see. Let me let me say one thing also. And Let's that's see. better than Marquez. I'm sorry, Beeb. I just want to say that's better than Marquez's first pay per view that did like Let's 25. See. Let's see what pay per what uh, Mayweather's pay per view numbers are in his next fight. If he doesn't fight Pacquiao, that's going to be a telling tale. Well, we we're but never going to see. We're only going to get. We're only going to get. Uh, three seventy-five. What's Say again? Marquez versus Bradley did three seventy-five. Oh yeah, that that didn't do. That yeah, didn't that's do not at all. that's not Marquez's first pay-per-view either, and he was coming off a Pacquiao win. Get out of here. Okay, Marquez. <laughs> you compare. Listen, and that's what I was saying about the the Raymond. Alvarez fight versus the Omar well, Chavez fight, right? Marquez and Rafael Marquez have already made the name in Mexico Marquez big. Alvarez well, is establishing his name. Marquez has years nah, of fights nah, that nah, he's nah, given nah, us. Nah, 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 nah. Listen, nah, Marquez on, has nah, years of fights that he's... Like can I talk? Marquez has years of fights that he's given us, but on his first pay-per-view, he did 225. Compare that to Canelo's first pay per view, and then compare the age. Ness, Alvarez got gifted his name. He didn't build his name. He got gifted that shit. From it's a whole family. No, no, it's a whole family fighting. What are you talking about? Well, Alvarez, Alvarez don't have a famous fighter that was a, that, a, a famous father. He doesn't have a famous father like Chavez, like Chavez Jr. Does? What are you talking about? You be. That makes no sense. Gifted his name. He was born with the name. Get out yeah. of here. Oh, man. No, 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 no. He was gifted it by the network, man. That's what I'm talking about. Whatever. Nah, man. Whatever. They looked, they looked at him, and, and he fit. Yo, they looked at him, and he fit the part. That's all it is, man. That's it. He fit the part. Exactly. That's what, Listen, I'm, that's what I'm saying. No, well, no, but, 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 but how, how could he be gifted a name? Like, like, like he, wasn't, he didn't have, like, a famous father or anything like that. That's how you gifted the name. It's no, no. more than that, no, though. He, he was Wait a minute. The name because of how he looked. No, that's no. It's okay, that's that's a fair argument. He had the he had that that look. Yeah, okay. But so did Dane LaHoya have that look. But again, you can have that look, but you still have to be able to fight. Yo, this dude has fought okay, yeah, and good competition recently, and we gotta give him credit for that. The guy that you outweighed by twenty pounds. Yo, you sound like a straight up fucking. Yo, you can criticize that, but you know what? We gotta, we gotta stay, we gotta stay and look what's in front of us right now. We gotta look at what the guy's doing lately. You know, he's fighting Lara, he's fighting Trout, he's fighting Mayweather. I mean, come on, man, it don't get any better than that. We gotta acknowledge that. And then he's, no, and he's looking no, at, no, and then he's looking no, to fight, and then no, he's looking to fight the middleweight champ of the world in Miguel Cotto. No, then he's looking to fight the middleweight champ of the world in Miguel Cotto. We gotta give him credit for that, bro. Come on. Haters, 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 haters,
we yeah. we can't hate a, we all we I'm can't saying, hate on this guy anymore. It's impossible. And I've been the biggest it. critic of him before. He's saying that the name was gifted to him, the television networks. There's seven brothers, and none of them brothers have been able to do what Canelo did. So he wasn't gifted shit. It don't matter if they well, gave yeah, him the... Yeah. Let me finish, Nelson. You got to fuck... You, damn, you got the Bieber writers in you. Listen, yeah, you got me it now, doesn't man. matter... It doesn't matter if the television cameras are on you because all that does is put you under the microscope. He performed. Why are you still hating? I'm not hating. I'm just giving an opposite opinion, man. A hater I'm just stance. An opposite opinion. Sounds you like a hater stance. You're being a contrarian. Like, like Ricardo Alvarez. Ricardo Alvarez didn't deserve all like all that you know little bit of fame that he was getting. And he proved it. Torn up by Yayo Thompson. And he proved it. He proved it by getting that ass beat. But why are you hating on Canelo? Who's doing the winning? He didn't win against Mayweather. Whatever, man. Oh well. Yeah, wait, hold up. Hold all right, all right. No, 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 no. I'm wrapping it up. Wrapping it up. I'm wrapping it up. I'm wrapping it up. Slow down. Now they're out of control today. Listen, we're gonna move on to uh, some notable upcoming fights that you guys should definitely tune your DVRs to in, uh, on for on uh, Monday, September 29th for Fox Sports Deportes. In Hildago, Texas, it's no longer going to be Antonio Tarver and Jonathan Banks. Um, bumped up to the headline is JoJo Joseph Diaz Jr. versus Raul Hilgado of Hilgado, Texas. Uh, pun intended. Fidel Magdanado Jr., last time I seen him, he was fighting versus Michael Perez, and he gave it a pretty good spirited effort towards the end of the fight, even scored a knockdown. He's going to be taking on Nelson Laura in an eight-round junior welterweight fight. Ricardo Alvarez, speak of the devil, uh, is going to be fighting Michael Johnson in an eight-round junior welterweight fight. Um, let's see how he looks now, because this will be, what, the third time they show us this guy, and they keep shoving him down our throats and he's not doing much of anything. So Antonio Tarver Jr., uh, son of Antonio Tarver, who was supposed to headline, is going to be fighting Zachary Briones in a four-round middleweight fight. On Wednesday, set your DVR. Yes, Wednesday, we're going to get a really good treat. Remember, set your DVR. So what we'll do is for Tuesday, we're going to do a preview show of this fight. Curtis Stevens, Hassan Endam, 12-round IBF eliminator, which I don't know what's it going to mean because if Stevens wins, maybe Al Heyman signs him because that's the only way he's going to get a shot at, you know, uh, Sam Solomon. Well, not Sam Solomon. Hopefully Sam Solomon beats Jermaine Taylor, and we don't even have to worry about that whole fucking, uh, you know, soap opera that would be if Stevens won and Jermaine Taylor won. But on the undercard of that, we're going to have Frederick Lawson versus Ray North in a 10-round welterweight fight. Remember, this is a special edition of ESPN Sports. And I want you guys to pay close attention to this fight because when we do the review, we're also going to review the environment and the promotion because this promoter is the same guy that did all the television stuff uh, and production for Wheel of Fortune and Oprah Winfrey. So he's coming into this with some experience in TV and having to get ratings. You know, those are two very, very successful uh, shows that were on long running television. So let's see what Michael King of King Sports can do for boxing on a limited budget. This is not an HBO Showtime budget. This is ESPN2. This is, you know, he came out and told me and Victor that this is a $600,000 budget. And remember, he has to pay the fighters with that money. So that is October 1st. Then Friday, October 3rd on Telemundo, we're going to have Daniel Lozano versus Jonathan Vidal in a junior bantamweight fight. And Saturday, for anybody in the Manchucket, Connecticut, Boston, New York City, New Jersey, get in your car and drive 10 hours area to uh, Connecticut. Me and B will be there. And Victor, we're going to be watching this fight up and close. And, of course, bringing you all coverage from Rancy's, Rancy's Bartholomew versus Fernando Salcido for the IBF junior welterweight a junior lightweight title. Also, the fight of the night, in my opinion, Vanez Martirosian versus Willie Nelson. And the return of Chad Dawson versus Tom Caparnsi. Same dude. Didn't, isn't this the same dude that fought Peter Quillen? Uh, 
no, 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 not him. Furnace, I, I, I've heard of this guy. I swear to God, I think he's got a really like a highlight reel knockout and him being knocked out. Dominic Wade, and this is funny. Dominic Wade is another Al Heyman fighter. He's from Washington and he's all the way in Connecticut this time around. He's going to be fighting Keandre Leatherwood. This is a good fight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you tune into this on Saturday night showtime, which is probably going to be showbox, but if not, it doesn't matter. The first fight, Dominic Wade versus Keandre Leatherhead, Leatherwood, Dominic is going to get tested here. So uh, tune in. On Bing, BN Sports, these people have been doing awesome fights. This time, not so much so, but if you want to watch Johnny Gonzalez, who knocked out Abner Mars, possibly knock out an old, um, should be retired Jorge Arce, you can do that on BN Sports. They put on a beautiful production. The fights look awesome. They have grade A cameras, clearly, or good editing. You can watch Gonzalez defend his WBC, Felton, WBC featherweight title. Uh, on Unimas, we got Felix Verdejo. Uh, I'm excited to see that, but he's been given a lot of stiffs, but I guess that's what it is. Also, we're going to have some undercards on that. I'm not going through all these, uh, you know, nondescript fights. Celestino Caballero, if you want to see that, it's untelevised, untelevised. Look for it on YouTube or Daily Motion or wherever fights can be found. Celestino Caballero is back in action versus Adrian Estrella. And uh, Andre Kotelnik, also going to be fighting in the Ukraine to TBA. Also in Atlantic City, we'll be bringing you coverage from this from our very own videographer, Josh Grafer. He's going to be uh, at the Glen Tapia versus Dante Bandavaris fight. Um, Mikhail Zuski from Canada, for our Canadian listeners, he's going to be fighting Roberto Ventura. Zuski, a pretty good uh, welterweight. Uh, be good to see him in action. And also Jesse Hart, the super middleweight. I believe Jesse Hart's undefeated and uh, may be an Al Heyman fighter. Remember, we're going to do this chat room roll call. Everybody listening on YouTube, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Super important. Super important. If you don't want to do that, Fine, just go to theboxervoice.com, click on the donate button, give us like 25 bucks, and that's cool. But if you don't, if you don't want to donate, then please share the video so that uh, we could at least gain some popularity and uh, possibly get you know some sponsor to take care of that for you. Um, so let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, we basically covered all the upcoming fights. A lot of boxing, like I said, MV2, you got to get your life right, man. A lot of boxing out there. B, man, any final thoughts before we get out of here? Um, you know, I'm looking forward to this quadruple header next week. Uh, this Vanus Monterosian fight versus Willie Nelson, 50-50 fight, very, very interesting. Um, and I'm just looking forward to it, man. And and I think that uh, you know, let's cross our fingers and just hope for a good year next year. I think this Canelo deal could make some noise. I think this could be the beginning of something beautiful, be beginning of something exciting. And I'm really looking forward to it, man. Let's keep our fingers crossed. As am I, and again, I just want to give a quick shout out to all the many writers that are, you know, putting in yes. that hard work yes. on the website. The we website appreciate you. Is producing tremendous amounts of traffic, um, and uh, there's going to be a part where this uh, where this becomes, you know, full time for a lot of you guys. So keep putting in that work, and uh, we appreciate you guys coming in and definitely reading all our guys' articles and, and, and making us one of the popular and premier websites uh, with guys that have been doing this over a decade. Our competitors have been out there over a decade. So thank you to all our listeners, all our readers, all our viewers and subscribers. You know, without you, it wouldn't be possible. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue. We're, we're going to continue to bring you more shows. Me and Beeb are going to try and do shows during the week on uh, numerous topics. Like I said, um, you know, that was sporadic, and I said it out loud, but we're going to lock that in. Tuesday night, we'll be doing an Endom review because that fight merits it. It's a, it's a big fight in that division, and uh, hopefully that can lead to some good boxing over on HBO. Maybe Curtis Stevens could get a rematch. Um, just by winning that fight, he could get a rematch with Golovkin. Maybe he's got to get a title. Who knows? Maybe San Samuelin wins, and, and him and Stevens can get it on on HBO. Uh, the point is that we're going to be bringing you coverage to all those fights um, more often uh, than you think. We're going to continue to do our Thursday and Sunday night show, but uh, throughout the week, 
if there's some news that merits it, we're gonna we're gonna crank up the radio show and we're gonna crank up the YouTube and we're gonna bring you what you deserve, you know, from any media outlet because that is our goal to be your one stop shop. Hey guys, I just want to send a special thank you to all of you guys that are listening to the Boxing Voice and downloading us on iTunes, rating us five stars. Uh, we would, would like. Actually, uh, I forgot to talk to the uh, shout out the chat. All right, let's take it from the top. Adolf Mayweather, Aerodynamic Boxing, B, Blacklisted Boxing, Cedric Sports, Kute, Dave the Sinister, Dean James, Die Hard, Casual Fan, Ephraim for President, El Dude Boxing Commentaries. And here we go with the guests again. You guys got to seriously make some accounts here, man, on uh, Blog Talk so you can receive your email whenever we go live. Um, Hams Tony, Jasmine Guy, Jasper Chi, Cam UK, Lane 99, letting gifted hands go. One of my favorite usernames. Nelta, uh, nothing for something. Panama said, ringleader X Dank, the one, and that's everybody. B, uh, check the app. Um, because last time I'm on it right, I'm on it right now, brother. Let me know. Well, you do the shout outs for the app. I'm gonna I'm doing do it right now. Serato, Serato Five, Garland Chappelle. Stony Stone, um, Loma, <laughs> Loma Uska Klitschko, uh, Boxing Voice Vic is in here, uh, Don King, Mike Tyson, DT, Maniac, Jazz, uh, Noraz81, and uh, Anthony from Albany, LMH. Okay, I think, Nesto, you were in here a couple days ago, so I think that's where it ends. All right, and on YouTube, we got Sinister Charlie, Stuart Dawson, uh, Dana Garcia, Cami Rocks, uh, More Iraq Genetics, Fla Foul? No, F, I don't know, FY Odor, Manny Guatico, The Nielsen's, and... Uh, I don't know, Areola. Man, you guys, I don't understand with these crazy-ass usernames. But not, I don't get it either, man. Uh, thank everyone for listening, as always. Uh, you know, we definitely appreciate it. And like I said. Hey, guys, I just want to send a special thank you to all of you guys that are listening to the Boxing Voice and downloading us on iTunes, rating us five stars. Uh, we would, would like you to continue Welcome to back. Welcome like back. us on Boxing Facebook, fans. follow us on Twitter, yeah, at the Boxing Voice. And for anybody interested in writing for the site, you can definitely do so by shooting us an email over at T-H-E-V-O-X-I-N-G-V-O-I-C-E at yahoo.com. Address your email to Victor Salazar. He's the editor-in-chief. Send something over that he can read. If he likes what he reads, you're part of the team. And remember, leave a five-star review if you're already part of the team. Later, guys. Until the next episode. All right. Much better.